Hey, look at that. Shay 45, it's a Friday. We got a bunch of guests, and I would like to welcome... Uh, is it official? Are you, like, officially here, Destroy? Listen, B. I'm, I keep sneaking in here, yeah. and uh, security thinks I clean, so I'm like, all right, you know, yeah. I, I'm going to just keep running <laughs> that one. That's yeah. it. Do you bring a lunch pail and a fucking mop, or they just look at you and like, ah. Yeah, he's good. He looks like he <laughs> fixed cars. Go ahead. Come on, son. Go ahead. What well, shit? They ain't ready for you out on the West Coast and shit. Let's go. We out here, man. Yeah, you... Uh, you got your your brain's too tight to to be so a worker, do, be man. The, yo, you got to yeah. know hood rats, B. I'm connected with yeah. hood rats who who have duck sauce, so they put duck sauce in my hair, and you know it's really looking nice. Look at this, yeah. B. Yes, yeah, keep it fresh. I'm looking like Queen Latifah and set it off, man. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, like, how come they always kill everybody at the end of those movies, man? Like, it bothers the fuck out of me. They gotta die, B. Listen, <sighs> Optimus Prime is the first death that ruined my life. So, uh, what are we talking about, B? It's Transformers, fam. The Matrix. When come on, you ain't. Yeah. Come on, man. Let's go. I didn't even watch Transformers. To be yeah, real I know. That's 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 why you know. That's why life. No, nah, I was just mad because I couldn't afford one. All I had was one GoBot. So like, I, I was bitter watching Transformers, bro. Nah, you gotta have friends you can steal from. Let's go, man. Ain't nobody having. It. We was broke, bro. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Let's go, man. We was, it was broke. Yeah, I, I was straight up bitter, mad little and bitter, like, fuck this shit. <laughs> Take my little boot, shitty-ass go-bot motorcycle, couldn't even walk. Come on, man. ass bike. A Ninja Turtles, you know, you, you hip on them. You ain't have a crush yeah. on uh, uh, April, April O'Neil? Oh, yeah. Come on, son. Oh, Stop. April could get it. Oh, she definitely could get it. She was a season. Now, now, Rude Juice talking about action, man. I hey, but, but I'm, I'll, I'm, a, I'm 77, right? So mm -hmm. I was little when Return of the Jedi came came out and I remember one of my first real fucking like wake up horny dreams was Princess Leia on, on. the leash. Come with, on, exactly. Uh, Jabba. I was like, stop, dog. Yeah. Come on, son. Wasn't we all crushing <laughs> on Roger Rabbit's uh, homegirl? Jessica uh, Rabbit? Yeah, Jessica. Oh, she could get it. I still put a kid in that right there. Let's go. I wonder what a, a mixed cartoon baby would look like. A mixed like cartoon? Half, It'll look like, like me. But drawn. <laughs> I look like something out of Jim Henson. Let's go, yeah. man. Fraggle Rock. Straight up. <laughs> truly. <laughs> truly. Uh, so, well, let me say welcome. Welcome, welcome. I, I, I'm I, sorry it took this long to holler at you, bro. Bro, I, I tried like, to holler at you back when I was out here for the Super Bowl. I was in your DMs, and some other homie hit me up and was like, you know, he's a... And I was like, oh, right, bro, I don't even be. Uh, I know you I, don't. I learned. I don't. I left. I left everything. <laughs> I learned. I learned. Salute to you. Salute to Mad Lib. Uh, salute to Most Def. All these individuals who are just not about technology. We're like, now nah, we go. We're moving how we moving, man. There we go. Yeah, and you know how it is. You're surrounded by it. You could you could not be with it, still but you're, you're yeah you're around that shit no matter what. I love it. No matter what. So yeah, man, it's 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 real dope, man. A, a pleasure to be to to be on your slot right here, just kicking it with you, man. Uh, you know, thank you for for all you've done, entertaining a lot of great human beings out there, man. <laughs> thank you, I appreciate it. I I don't know if you feel the same way, but you know, uh, when you're in the box, you don't know if people like you or not. You just do your thing and hope for the best. Yeah, I, you know, I put my best foot forward and just you yeah. know, try to. Me, I'm I'm really about like just making sure. I don't know. Be I, if I'm trying to be entertained, I'm trying to elevate uh, culture, what it is yeah. that we were raised on, and yeah. also have the opportunity to be on a platform like this. It's all about uh, elevation, man. Because I remember when I was a young, being inspired by the little things that made it possible for me to feed, eat the culture, and get down with it. I remember. It's funny you say that too. I, like one of my best memories. There was a uh, there was one high school that had a fucking a radio station that could actually broadcast. I, it was it was miles away from me but it still worked and i remember those days were being able to call up to the rap show and request my song and just how much it meant like yeah. that, you know just to be able to chop it up with this person on air man it, it was it meant so much to me man the shit man shit yeah. first first person i seen my, my sister was dating with uh, dating a dude the uh, uh, bum ass hood rat and she took me out to a pool hall that's how she was babysitting me mad cigarettes four in the morning <laughs> And Peppa was there. Peppa from Salt and Pepper. And uh, I was just yeah. looking at her. And she was like, go say something to her. And I'm like, L come on, man. That's Peppa. And she's like, the fuck out of here. Go say something to her. And she went up and she signed my hat. I felt like, oh, my God. I just met like a superhero. Like, holy shit. But, you know, that's the how captivating the culture is.
And, and you was in New York, so you you're a, a, a bit more peripheral. Uh, when I when I first got the job, I got to meet like Special Ed and Dana Dane on the same day, and nice. it broke my face. I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> I got it!" Oh, Cinderella, I got him. I was so excited, bro. How about, how about when you meet one and he's a dick, and you're like, uh, "Fucking, uh, oh my god, what the hell's who, going on?" I can tell you that I, I really wasn't even a fan of him, uh, but Rick Ross was a fucking asshole, man. He was Shiza a, Manelli, your man. Yeah, bro. <laughs> it be hey, you know, it be like that. It be like that sometimes. Sometimes you meet somebody, and you're like, damn, man. Thought it'd be much more more fun than that. But they said, don't meet your heroes. Yeah, you know? for yeah, right. <laughs> and I, yo, I'll be right in an elevator, or like really next to somebody, and just like private time where I could talk to them. But I rather just nah, I'm good. And just stay in the space. Have you have you been disappointed? And I don't expect you to have, uh, call people out or anything like that. Of course, I've been disappointed. Yo, I met my I met I met my mother. I met my father. Both <laughs> pieces of shit, fam. <laughs> Fuck out of here, both of them. Yeah, man. I see you on the streets. Smoke. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm you, singing you just, names. Uh, yeah, you got the, you, you just walk and shake my head when you look at him like Jesus Christ. This is this is the best you could do. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's, it's how it is, man. But you know what? Yeah. There's there's a lot of people. You got to also understand a lot of them. Are, you know, you get egos involved, and uh, yeah. you know, then when you get older and you see that they were bitter, because that I, I used to see like the old heads at that time being bitter oh. when I was a little kid. They were bitter at other people and I was, this is all new information to me because yeah. I'm thinking everything is peace, love, unity and having fun and I'm like, wait, i never seen this. So we're kind of behind the curtain right now with Rude Jude, man. I'm going to tell you because, yeah. uh, you know, I really like to focus on the positivity of our culture but you know what? Because you've been through adversity and when you right. smile, it, it, it's worth more. The, the smile is, is much more doper because you went through some shit. So Yeah, and to me, I don't think, I'm not bashing I'm I'm just we happen to work in hip hop. I'm sure this could be with any anywhere that of you course. work. Like this is not uh, this Exclusive. is not just hip. Yeah, this yeah. is not like I'm not over here like hey, another bad thing about yeah. rap. You know, <laughs> it's it's just about humans. Yeah. I remember uh, DJ Cool DJ Herc, right? And you know, man, he's been skipped over about a thousand <laughs> fucking times, right? So I. I didn't, I didn't really consider that, and I finally got to meet him, and I was like, "Yo, man, I, f I fuck like thank you, I fuck with you, I'd yeah. love to have you, like just come on and and chop it up, and I I want to learn, you know." And he was like, "How much is it paying?" <laughs> and I was, I was like, "Man, this." Fuck. I'm at, a, I'm at, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna tell this story, man. So I'm All at right. a party, right? And uh, Everlast, we're hanging out, and Everlast goes to take. He he was like, "Oh shit, cool Herc, can we get a photo?" And uh, he was like, yeah, $40. And I was like, man, that's, hold on. That's fucking Everlast. Take it easy. Like, <laughs> let's all kind of re reset. I, you know, but, uh, you know, you got to understand a lot of these guys did not enjoy the, the financial benefits of the culture. So yes. they're tr trying to figure out how to get it where they can, you know, because yes. everybody's saying their names, but they're not giving them the financial, you know. Oh, bro, trust, like. Trust. I under. I get where they're coming from, and I really do. Um, it's just. It's that one thing. Is like, don't let your anger get in the way of you getting some cash because you cool to these cats. Suddenly you're on. You're, you're doing college tours. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you. You. You might have to fuck with me for free, but that's gonna lead to some cash down the line. I'm with that. I'm with Collabs that. Collabs and shit. And I'm gonna tell you something deeper too. A lot of things with these legends that we talk about, like the forefathers of our culture, a yeah, lot yeah. of them are, you know, they can't really have a, a straight conversation with each other because there's so much like deep shit, hood shit, uh, that yeah. you know. So all the getting the our history correct on who made this and who, nobody wants to admit certain things. You know, I, lucky that we are able to do our own due diligence with seeing how how Sugar Hill Records did what they did. Sylvia Robinson, you know, yeah. did a couple of people grimy, but you know that's how the nature of the business was but uh you know it's 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 for us our, our our culture just go back or just really just have a blast and enjoy the music and and what it what it all encompasses yeah it's funny and i, I do I, I like how you bring history in because it's a it's uh 
it's so easy to think that we came up with some shit. And, <laughs> and it's like, oh, wait, hold up. That was a chorus from some other shit from fucking when I was four. You know, like, you got to appreciate Yo, these and things. I'm sure there's wolves out there who be sitting there with their tween-ass kids, yep. and the kid is saying the lyric, and they don't. the, the parent is like, wait, you don't know that's a rock chem line? Yeah. But who's, I remember I had a, a, a what is your man, uh, your man, uh, fucking bald ass actor. What's his name, man? The dude, uh, Stella got his groove back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that Malik. Uh, no, nah, yeah. th- th- you know what I'm talking uh, about. Yeah. Anyway, no, I know exactly. So I- I'm up here and I'm t- I'm like, yo, what rappers you know? And he said, Rakim. You know, and that right there, that that's a red flag. Done. That's, that's that's a red flag. That's somebody that that's a tackle. Yeah, step away yeah. from the vehicle type shit. Like uh, I know, you know. Uh, yo, it even bothers me when uh yeah uh, white people. Hold on, hold on, hold yeah, on, hold on. Hold on, uh, you know, yeah. Man Crush Mondays, John admitted it's uh, Tay Diggs. Tay Diggs. Yeah, it's Tay Diggs. Thanks, yeah. thanks so much. He had to correct us. I'm sorry. We were on the flow. I hope he Googled that shit. I hope he did. I, no, I can't remember. S- sitting back there licking no, his lips like, no, nah, it's Tay He's got Tay, the poster yeah. in the bathroom, me. <laughs> <laughs> how do we not know that shit? That's how John got his groove back. He was doing really bad here, and then he talked to Tay, hung out with Tay Diggs for a weekend, Holy came shit. back, and was just like fucking whamming like that's, doing that's it. how it be man but you know once again salute to all those who kind of pass the culture to homies and not treat them like uh like the little kids who don't know anything or even right. the younger generation that called the other guys oh, you are old head get out of here right because they don't do that in any other culture only in hip-hop they don't do that to rock they don't do that to no nothing skate like tony hawk is still out here doing what he does you know what i mean and respect it i get and i, I think that's a really good point i say that i say it before it's like I love, I, I've been to so many like uh, huge old uh, rock and roll groups. Yeah. And this, they're dropping 150 to 300 a fucking, for a ticket. Ticket, yeah, it, let's it's, go. It's full. I, I think it's bullshit that, you know, our, the founders of this shit that have a, a huge library, they could barely fill a fucking 500. Uh, 500 seat bar type shit man it's like what the fuck what do we value man <laughs> let's go man so make sure you yeah. guys uh, when you have the opportunity to see any artist that is coming to your city go out there yeah. buy a ticket and if yep. you're a good person sometimes just buy the ticket and don't show up or give it to a homie fuck it man let's keep elevating this shit right Ruju like that's a that's a great point I never even thought about that and I'll start I'm, I'm actually gonna start doing that shit just like just support just because so, if you want if you want something, we vote with our bucks. You know how the fuck that goes, man. You're right. So, like, what I'm doing out here right now in L.A. So, I'm out here for an event called Designer Con, right? It's about, uh, you know, toys, action figures, and shit like that. Okay. But I'm, I started this thing called Show Off Your Gems, where it's about collecting. Uh, m- mainly, it started initially about hip-hop uh, promo items. You remember promo items? Like, Def Jam used to make something, like a yeah, vlog yeah. or I'll- something. I so worked I, at a record store, yeah. Yeah, so totally. you definitely know what I'm talking yeah, yeah. about. So it started with that, but on the first episode, I had Crazy Legs, who also happened to be a Yankees fan, who had all this yeah. Yankee shit, a picture of him breakdancing in, corn, in front of Queen Elizabeth, a, hit, a picture of him and Madonna grinding, that I was like, wait, hold on, we are so dynamic as a culture that yeah. this, is just a, a, this is just a beautiful thing. So this designer con that I'm out here for, that got me out because, you know, I want to continue to elevate, uh, you know, our culture in that yeah. collecting space in that toy space yeah. the way we'll buy a, a Batman a Spider-Man whatever it is that hey why not you get a Run DMC why not get a Chuck D a Public Enemy they were our superheroes you Hell know yeah. what I mean so yeah that's what I'm doing man yo have you like even even now man even the rap chips like you should have one every mo- every one of these fuckers like yeah. I never I, like yeah. It blew my mind the first time I saw that shit. I was like, hell no, man. They got like rap chips, man. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it tastes like expired milk, man. But it's all good. It got a rapper you, you like on it. Bro, you know I didn't even buy one of those fucking things. I was like, just no, just seeing that. And I was like, rap chips, that's all they're banking on right here, man. I don't even know if they're made out of potatoes, bro. Bro, you got people on soda bottles now. Yeah. You got iced tea on Cheerios. You got Coors doing the collaborations with the Frankenberries. Like, yeah. yo, we out here, fam. We out it's, here. It's really, yeah, it's, 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 this is the thing that I find kind of, I don't, there's, when you when you become pop, when you when when you start showing up on cereal boxes, yeah, your pop music, dog. That's fine though, but you know that's Ice T though. 
You no, know, but like, I mean, even remember Ken, Ken Play had a motherfucking Ken, Ken Play had a Play, cartoon. They had a comic book. Yeah, Marvel. they had all that. They were the first ones to introduce um, uh, Venom, fam. Yo, no son. Shit. Yeah, uh, the comic book number nine. It's a collector's item. B, I'm in this world. Root Jew, you yeah. talking to destroy? Let's go. Come on, man. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go hug some homeless women. <laughs> Yeah. Come on, I'm out here trying to sell batteries. I'm not hugging them, but I will let That's them what I do, man. fillet me. Come on, man. I'm out here, man. Let's switch up some sneakers. I don't understand like how homeless homeless ladies beg when they can just sell pussy. Nah, it's all good. Listen, when you offer what? when you offer a person who is uh, doesn't have a crib some food and they're like, uh, what is it? You know, because sometimes they don't want a burger and fries. You know, sometimes, sometimes they, they want, want something penis. else. Oh my yeah. god, your man, rude Jude. Oh my god, it's rude. It's Jude. He's oh, here. you meant actually food. I thought we were still on the fellatio thing. Oh, like, shit. Let's go. <laughs> like banging bums, bum ladies in Bang their mouth. Bun. Yo, you remember those DVDs, those fights, the bum fights? Oh, yeah. Man. How you think my parents met? Let's go. <laughs> Who won? <laughs> my mom, man. She arm, she arm wrestles to this day. Let's go. Right here. Over the top. Twisting her uh, ball cap backwards. Yeah, for into sure. Turning the machine. Die. Yeah. Her inner uh, Sylvester Sloan, R.I.P. Uh, none other than uh, your man uh, Patrick Swayze. No Bro house, Bro it's a classic. man. We were just it talking. Again. They they're gonna make another Roadhouse. Yeah, they're making another Roadhouse. Get ready. We need you in it. Like a UFC fighter or something like that. Some somebody <laughs> like it's, it's it's gonna be one of those movies nobody wants to watch. I know. I wish they would just fucking stop, dog. Just make some new shit. Quit like. Touching things like that I like, man. I know that it has a, it has a warm market, it has a built-in market into it already. That's how it is, you know. I know how it cool, is. But, you know. I know how it is, but uh, can you imagine if that was always the case? How stagnant we would be would have become. Absolutely. No one wants to risk nothing no more. Well, well, welcome to the world, man. But you know Ain't what? They got shit. unique. But there's unique people like yourself. You know, yeah. where you're out here, you know, you're making your own groove, making your own path. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, I mean, Tay Diggs helped me make my own groove, He's a man. Snack. So, yeah. Let's go. Let's go, Tay Diggs. <laughs> Holla at me. You know my people yeah. number. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get it. Uh, <laughs> How you like LA compared to, uh, compared to New York? Oh, I love it. I love it here. Yeah, I, yeah I've, I've had unprotected sex here. I'm, I'm good. It's a good city, man. It's a lot of fun, you know. My my grandfather came here. I got a whole family out here. Oh, you know? work. Yeah, yeah. Downtown, like the the border of South Central, and uh, to this day, yeah, a lot a lot of a lot of people with with kids that they're not able to raise them because they like drugs more. So, so yeah, you down at the border of South Central. I that, I used to go down there. In yeah. the morning, in the well, yeah, buy just DVDs to... with DMX on it. We use no them pills. Over? Okay, pills. Let's go. We're in the future. You're allowed <laughs> to do everything. Yeah, my man couldn't get mushrooms, and uh, he had he had uh, the Vikes on the low. So we, I just go to. This is a long time ago, <laughs> man. Uh, clearly, that that ship has sailed. No one, no one even wants Vicodin anymore. But Shit, yeah, there's, there's so much shit out there now, B. I yeah I I don't even think I can sell Vike to a fucking twelve year old. They'd be like, "What are you a fucking faggot?" I'd be like, "Nah, man, Holy you know this shit. This shit used to be good, <laughs> man." Bro. Is saying words. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, remember remember when you used to be able to say words? Shit, I, what? I, 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 I still I, got homies that be saying yeah, words. Yeah, I try to keep that shit alive to remind people yeah. that like yeah, <laughs> we still say words out here just because you don't say words. Let's go. We say words, bro. Let's go. Yeah. But there's some conversations I had with some generals, man, and when they talk like that, man, I'm like, oh, I miss it. I miss that energy <laughs> because it's so it's 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 so it, it it's from a different time at this point. How crazy yeah. that is, right? Yeah, it's so no. fucking crazy, man. Uh, yeah, well, that's and that kind of goes back to that pop thing we was talking. I was Let's like, go. no, the, with, like with once it becomes pop, there's prices to pay. Suddenly, suddenly you can't speak how you want to speak and say words, if you will. And yeah, if you do say right. words, you're on a, you're on an apology tour. And uh, you yep. know maybe maybe something was acceptable till last year, and now they're lose now people lose everything for that for saying something that that's was why, acceptable, th bro. Yeah, that's why I try to chill in the space of watching the Smurfs and watching the Snorks and Dundercats and stupid wild shit, never ending story, shit like that. Goonies, uh, let me get lost. I'm at that Yo, space in my life. So we about the same age because you just claimed everything I grew up on. Exactly. Too. Let's go. Let's go. Now your hairline's way better than mine. Come on, bro. B, I'm out here, man. Let's go. I'm out here with yeah, Sean too. Paul. I'm, I'm out here too. My fucking 
My hairline's way, way back out here, but it's we all out here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. My what bro. It was a uh, you, you. I think never in the story was my one of one of my favorites out of that shit, out of that whole thing coming. Bro, up. and Gel- Goonies. Hold on, hold on. What's Gelflings, that? you remember Gelflings from Dark Crystal? Bro, them, that shit was a nightmare for me nah, watching it, bro. Son, I wanted it. Yo, they were so attractive. Those little puppets. Oh yeah. Looked- oh, the, the the. I was thinking of the fucking the vulture things with the. They look like. Bird yes. skeletons, bro. That, that like, fucked me up, man. That looks like the first five X's I've ever had in my life. Man. That's how they look. Let's go. <laughs> Did you catch them like that, or that's how they no, look? No, that's how we do it. That's that, yeah. <laughs> that's Shit. Just, they bailed like I didn't, that. I didn't know what good what good quality meat was until I grew up. I was like, okay, I got to get out the hood a little more often. You know, I was thinking about that, and I've, I've said this before, man. If I could talk to my young self, I'd have been like, hey, find a nerdy girl with good bone structure and yeah. uh, just just lock her ass down because all these half the chicks I fuck with that was cool yeah when you really look at them they just wore the right clothes and yeah had, like, and stress just, you out too yeah. man stress you out I had homies tell me yo they were tonguing out my girl after drinking St. Ives okay. with Hawaiian punch in it I'm like yo bro I can't have that shit come on <laughs> man <laughs> out here out here uh, in, in the D I don't know if they stopped but uh it was a uh, Corona with grenadine. <laughs> now I don't know what that is. Grenadine. That, oh shit. Yeah, yeah they would. Uh, that, that's like the. That would be a fancy drink if you were out to, like yeah, getting sushi. But, like, yeah, let me say, get a Corona with. I didn't know about sushi. Listen, I ain't know about sushi until I was like mid thirties, fam. For well, real, I was bro, on tour and I seen yeah. Black Thor eating some shit with rice, and I was like, "Wait, what's that, fam?" And he's like, "Sit down." And I was like, wow, look at this. You know about the spaceships and those. that was so rare to me, Bree. I'm just learning about shit now. The first, uh, I'm, I was the same way. We didn't, uh, well, that, we did, shit, I ain't had Thai food till I was damn near 20 just because we didn't have no Thai shit around us. And sushi was the same. I remember seeing Bun B eating sushi when I first met him, and it fucked me up, you know? <laughs> it's like Bun B eating sushi. <laughs> I don't know. I, I didn't know. I can't say anything else. Hey, Jude, I just wouldn't. Jude, I wouldn't. Oh, we, D Stroy's oh. ride is here. I got, oh, bro, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I man. Yo, go. yo, uh, your ride is here, D Stroy. Nah, it's the Dons, man. We over here being yeah. great, man. <laughs> Salute to you, Rude Jude. I am so thankful for you. Keep going. Man. Keep rocking. And bro, listen. If if, yeah. if anything is just uh, continuing energy uh, from from the time that I'm doing, man, and just keeping shit hype, bro. That's all. Man. Uh, we just know we appreciate you out here, and I'm so happy that some someone can hold it down. That's fucking knows. That's the best way I could put it. Somebody that is knowledgeable, funny, fucking quick witted, and keeps it moving with a different perspective on things. So that's why I wanted to salute you, bro. So, salute. Thank you so much, man. You, I appreciate man. you greatly, man. To everybody who is rocking with Rude Jude, I'm a good person. Check me out 12 p.m. <laughs> Eastern time uh, to 4 and uh, and 9 a.m. on the West Coast, man. Right? Good person. His credit is whamming. You can trust this guy, Two man. let's go. Let's get it. All let's right, get man. it. Thank you, my brother. Peace, Stay amazing. Bro. You too now. All right, look at that. Destroy. Making friends. Well, shit, man. He been... Uh, Fuck me. How long has he he's been out here? How long has he been on the station now? Oof, wow. John, All right, brother. Thank you All right, so man. Much, I'll see you. Until next time, okay? All right. Uh, I th- it's it's got to be uh, probably a little less than a year. Something like that. Okay. I think. All right. He's, he's been around for a bit. Yeah, it's just, I don't know what's what, so I try not to step on anything. Oh, we got we got Jen Man coming too, huh? Yeah, our old friend from the other office days. It's been a while since she's been on. It's funny, yes. I, I just thought about her the other day, out of nowhere. Well, the universe well, is speaking to you. It was good having Destroyer on. I was going to talk about the uh, Iran putting fifteen thousand people to death. <laughs> but by the way, that story is very sus. Like because the I read it in the other thing and I don't believe all all my all the sus stories, John. All the sus stories, right? Why are they sus? Where'd you fact check that? Because they're not real. 
If you go, where they, where they fact check it at? Everywhere. Where? Just go into Google News and type in fifteen thousand Iran, and you'll see it debunked look, over and I'll over. I'll again. double check. I'll All double right. check. All right. All right, and I will stand corrected too. Okay. All right, peace, peace. And let's play. Let's play a song and go. Right. It would have been nice for it to be true, though, wouldn't it? That would have been a good story. <laughs> That's the opposite <laughs> of a good story. Okay. It would been interesting. I'm a, I, I still don't believe you all the way, but um, but I will look. All right. All right. Peace, peace. You're listening to the All Out Show with you. The North Side. Yo. But, yeah. I have a look. I have a look. We are on oh, the I'm... air. We are on the air. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just said the f- most fucked up shit yeah. to Dr. Jim, Why? man. Why? And now we gotta go Why on the you air. Do this to me? Hey, what? here we are. I, you know, I just like to do that sometimes. She asked, hey, Dr. Jim, man, how you doing? I am good. How are you? Awesome. I was, I was just telling the doc, I've been thinking about her, and then poof, here she is, post-pandemic. We ain't seen you since, since the pandemic. I know, and here I am. So, uh, is there any new new shit that you're being confronted on on the dating scene? Because you are a relationship expert, correct? I if am a re- dating and relationship expert. I, I wrote Bam. a book called The Relationship Fix, Dr. Jen's Six-Step Guide to Improving Communication, Connection, and Intimacy. I've been a therapist, a licensed therapist for about three decades now. So, Bam. Yeah, I'm definitely the, an expert here. And I would say, look, I, I see a lot of people really sort of struggling to get back into the whole dating thing to begin with. And I think a lot of people have been very isolated. A lot of mm. people, you know, we've all been through a lot. And I think it's very easy to diminish that we are, we have had two years or a year, especially of turning on the TV and seeing body bags and kind of, we've got a collective PTSD. And I think a lot of people lost a lot of relationship skills during the last two years. And I think that there are a lot of mental health struggles. So that does not make dating any easier. And I think also that there are some new trends that are interesting. And I think that, you know, one is kind of people tend to be a lot more honest, a lot quicker on a date, which I think is actually a positive thing. But sometimes that eliminates people really quickly. Yeah. Um, What what do you find the 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 sex is valuing different things? Has that changed or what do you mean too honest, too quick? Well, I, and I, didn't, I don't know that it's too honest, too quick. I think it depends on the scenario. I think that there's I, a lot yeah. of kind of like, okay, here's what I'm looking for. I am looking for a one night stand. I'm looking for a fuck buddy. I'm looking for a husband, a wife or whatever. I think people are right. much quicker to say it on the first date that there used to be kind of this rule of like, don't talk politics, don't talk religion. There's like this list of things like don't talk about that on the first date. People are now talking about it on the first date because they also want to find out really quickly, like, is this person a match? Is this someone I want to hang out with? I think that there is a sense of life is too short. Like, let's figure it out and figure out if this is a match and move on quickly. I think that that has really shifted for sure. Well, here's the thing, too. It's like, I think the don't talk politics back in the day made sense because we weren't ruled like it wasn't everything like sickness like uh covid wasn't a political fucking football like they've turned everything into politics so uh, the the blowback of that is i like if a if if a woman has a ukrainian flag or her pronouns I don't even know if I'd fuck her on a one night stand because I I I, I wouldn't want to have a you. child with that. Yeah, like yeah, and, and I know look, she it's, not, it's not a match. And 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 look yeah. in that way, being so polarized may be a positive. You kind of pick your tribe quicker, but I, at the same time, I also think that we miss out on a lot of humanity in the process. No, I I completely agree with you, and that's. But I'm not I'm not the person leading with this. I'm not yeah. saying, hey, if you do this, this and that, I'll give anybody the benefit of the doubt. But if if you are like outwardly got to tell me that on your fucking profile, then yeah. 
fuck off. Like there's yeah, no, how do look, we, if, how do we grow from there? If someone defines themselves that way, they are not a match for you. They're and not that's a match good for anybody. Find out quickly so yeah. you can move on. Well, they are for some people. You're just yeah, not for those intolerant people. people. They're intolerant. That's that's the face of intolerance. To try like that, you have to go online and be like, I'm I'm so tolerant that I won't talk to anybody that doesn't agree with me. Like, please. Yeah, look, I think that when people are trying to figure out who they want to fuck, who they want to date, who they want to marry, I think the sooner we get that information, the best. Yes. Why, why, why waste the time? Why waste the breath? Why waste the mascara? Like, I guess why waste I, the condom? No, I understand that. But I'm saying is they're showing me their values. That's why I was right. asking, what do people want? So if some yeah. like if they're leading with that, I probably won't. I, I won't take them seriously. Yeah, but that but that's good. That's good that you know that about yourself. And I think that there are a lot of people like you who are a lot clearer on what they want in a date, what they want in a fuck, what they want in a, a partner. And in that way, it's probably good. I think we're belaboring this point, uh, Doc, because that's really not what I'm saying. But I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm I'm assigning judgment to that. You are not. This is basically it. It's like But I but look, I'm a therapist. I look at what are the dynamics, what helps people meet the people that they will connect with. I'm not here to talk about the politics of it. I'm here to talk about given your perspective, how do you find the right person for you? Given someone else's perspective, how do they find the right person? That's sure. really what matters. No, I hear you. I hear you. But my, I guess what I was saying is people's values are fucked up right now. And they're they're really not looking for what makes a good, uh, you know, if, if they think that petty wedge issues make, is going to make a good thing, then that lets me know everything I need to know about them. And perhaps that's more of an indictment on their character. Absolutely. So, all right. So we got that going and like, so people are afraid to date that they, they, we have become tribal. And I, I do, I agree with you because just not being around people, it's fuck people up. And also I feel like there's, you remember that in the height of it, we've created, we created like a whole, uh, there was a distrust of one another. We, yeah. There was like, you're always looking sideways at the next person. You hear a cough, you freak out. You know, I, remember I've been out in public, you, you accidentally cough and everyone's look, looks like you, like you're the person that like stole jewelry from the party. You know what I mean? Like when you like, like you're guilty of some shit. It, it, yeah. And that's got to have a negative effect, correct? And, and look, I do think that that affects dating and and it affects people in figuring out, is this someone I want to share air with? Is this someone who I have the same philosophical ideas with? Is this someone who will respect my boundaries or be on the same page as me and be like, fuck, let's go out. Let's cough all over each other and fuck and do our thing. And I think it's, again, it's really about finding people who are on the same page as you, because that sure. at the end of the day is, is what's going to lead to great relationships, great sex, and also the ability to communicate and to hear each other and to talk through things. That's what's up. That is what's up. <clears throat> um, the great sex thing is weird too, though. Uh, sometimes I hate people and end up having very good sex with them. I just, yeah, ha, it's like that. Well, I think that part of why you can have great sex with people who you hate is because there's a an emotional disconnect in that. And that one of the things that most people I speak to struggle with is combining emotional intimacy and sexual intimacy. And in certain ways, having sex with a stranger can be a lot easier than having sex with someone who you love, who you care about, who you care about their opinion yeah. and someone you hate they're even more disposable emotionally speaking. So it's kind of easier to have sex with them. You can ask for whatever freak things you like, you can yeah. talk them any way you want. And if they didn't like it, it's not going to destroy you. And then you can be done with it as opposed to someone who you feel a strong connection with that you want to see again, that you might want to have a future with. That's a much more vulnerable experience. And most people struggle with vulnerability. You're all, I mean, that's one of my biggest pitfalls. I always create, Hold on a second. I got a cough. 
<clears throat> excuse me, I always create these um, barriers, and it's they will I without me knowing it'll be like six months in the future. I know this will come up. I create these barriers so I don't have to be intimate. Now, as far as the hating thing, I think you can agree. Hate you. You still have a you still have an emotional con- hate. To be indifferent would be safer, but hate, I actually feel something about. Like, indifference, I don't yeah. give a fuck if you live or die or what, but hate yeah. is like a, it's still yeah. coming from an emotional It's different place. than apathy. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's more so, powerful than apathy because you've got more invested. You have, it's like, but you also have to ask yourself, is it someone you actually hate or is it someone you are indifferent about? Because if, if. No, no, I just, yeah, I hate. You like hate. Like, then there's right. something there's something about them that elicits that in you. Yes. And you have to ask yourself, what is it from my shadow side? What is it that I have repressed in myself that I'm seeing in this person? Look, if it's someone you don't know very well, right, right. and it sounds like we're talking about the one night stand where you hate the person, yeah. like that's the person that like what great information for you in this person that I've disowned in myself that I see in them right? that makes me hate them. Huh. Yeah, no, I, a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me. I think a lot of times we often hate things that were in us that were negative for us and that we had to really battle to overcome. And yeah, and also it, the it, things that our parents didn't like in us. You know, it's like, if if you think about like, a kid who is, let's say, really talkative and the parents are exhausted and they don't like that aspect of that child. They're like, oh, you're always talking too much. Oh, be quiet and shushing them. Well, what that kid does is in order that household, they will work on being quieter. They will kind of disown that part of themselves. And then when they're an adult and they see someone who's super talkative, they hate that in that other person because it's a part of themselves that they had to cut off and disown. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I haven't like as fucked up as my parents were, they accepted me for me for 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 the most part. And I, I, I really didn't have to deal with that, but I could totally see that. Uh, and that's eight, really eight, cool. seven, four, two, three, three, four, five. What's that? Yeah, it's cool, and right? That's really cool. I wish everybody had that experience of parents just accepting them and loving them as they are. I think we'd be a much healthier society. Yeah. Yes. And it's like that. That, that doesn't mean that uh, they are happy with me, but they still love me, even though. Like I, it was. Don't get it twisted, parents. They they weren't like you know what, Jude. You're fucking perfect. You don't need to do anything. Uh, no, they came down on me, but I knew that they still loved me. I never doubted that, and that might just be my own characteristics. Some people might take attack as they don't like me, but I didn't really give a fuck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Does that look, make sense? It sounds like yeah. It sounds like their love was unconditional, even if they didn't always like everything you did or the choices that you made. And that's different. And, and to have that foundation of unconditional love, even when they don't like things, it's very powerful. How, how often, I think most parents have unconditional love. So what are they doing to You'd be surprised. Make... You'd be surprised at how many parents love is conditional. Would they... There are a lot of narcissistic parents out there. I had some, I guess what I'm saying is, is like, they might've, tr- I could have been a different person in the exact same way they treated me. I could have said they only love me because if I did this, I mm-hmm. didn't give a fuck was my point. Yeah. Like, so I, it just made me question, like how many people are experiencing, uh, parents that only love them can, if they do this, 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 and that. Yeah. And they're they're mad at him if like you, a parent can be disappointed in you, mad at you, all of that shit. Um, mm-hmm. That doesn't mean that they don't love you anymore. Sure. So yeah. that's what I was asking. Like, how many parents are truly being like, "You're fucking dead to me. I don't want to ever talk to you. You're a fucking loser, and I hate you. Get the fuck out of my house." As opposed to, or even get even get the fuck out of my house ain't that bad. But like, or as opposed to like. I, I mean, if you're 18 and you're doing fuck shit, like get the fuck out of the house, you're an adult. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, you rolled I, look, your eyes at I, that. I couldn't tell you what the stats are, but look, yeah. obviously, people don't tend to come to me for therapy because they've had beautiful, perfect, lovely childhoods, and they can't wait to talk to me about how great it was. So, you know, I see more people who have had shit go down with their parents, and it's affected them and how they operate in their day-to-day life. They're ability to have emotionally intimate relationships like all of that sort of stuff but you would be surprised at how many parents are abusive and conditional in that way all right that's i get i understand that um yeah i don't know if that's a result of the parents or the or that people have just become more fragile that was more my thing and that that, that's kind of what i was wondering Cause I yeah. imagine if you take if you took one of your clients and gave them my whole childhood, they'd be crying to you that their parents didn't love them. Yeah. If I told you everything that went down with me, you could, and I had a different point of view on it. Uh, you could argue that my parents didn't love me, but I never doubted their love for some reason. Yeah. Well, you know, look. In some ways, in in my experience, it's easier to be able to do that and interpret that with abuse, verbal, emotional, all kinds of abuse, than neglect. A lot of the time, families where there is severe neglect going on, where they just let their kid for days at a time, typically what I see is is adults who had that kind of childhood have a harder time going, they love me. It may have been fucked up. They may have screamed at me. They may have done this, but they did it because they loved me and they were trying and they didn't know better. Whereas families where there was severe neglect, a lot of the time it's, it's harder to kind of wrap your head around. Okay. They love me okay. and they did their best. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that, <clears throat> that being said, I do fall under that thing of neglect yeah. so even to your point like all right I guess you, what was abusive yeah. yeah yeah my mom uh yeah my mom constantly would get dudes and put them ahead of us paid yeah. for you know work a bunch of jobs to pay for their coke habit and shit like that we lived yeah. in she moved away to save the family that she was she moved away to save her own family while me and my sister were still in high school so uh, and just left us to pay rent on our own. That might seem neglectful, but I still don't question her love. And that was sure. my point. My point was, are people just built differently? And I think yeah. I, I I heard yeah, yeah that that that's that was more my deal, man. Like, yeah. are we expecting more? Uh, look, I do think <laughs> that we are wired for different personalities and different traits. And some of that's deep in our DNA, it's in our wiring. And then some of it is what we do with what we've got. You know, there's there's a guy who wrote a book called Nurture the Nature that is a parenting book about kind of looking at your kid and kind of seeing what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are and working with who they really are and helping them to be kind of the best of what they already are wired to be as opposed to trying to you know, put the square peg in the round hole. But I do think that on some level, you had a survival mechanism that not everybody has for whatever reason. And yeah, look, because they, I actually had, it. I had difficulty. So yeah. I understand difficulty and, and perhaps they didn't have difficulty and they're under trying to figure out why they're not doing that well. So boom, we go to that. That's it, what I was asking. The, in your first three years of life, was your mom around? Was there anyone around, a caregiver, a grandparent, anyone? That was one of the most abusive times in my life. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that's when we learn to form attachments. That's when we learn if the world is a safe place or not, if we can expect to be <clears throat> tended to, nurtured, cared about. And that's where we form our ability to form bonds and relationships with other people. So yeah, that and that's why I have that difficulty right there. Um, Makes sense. But I also don't operate. I think to think that the world is a safe place, d- define safe, and it helped me be more robust for the actual world we live in. Yeah. Uh, look, it's safe. This is... idea of safe is like ridiculous. 
Well, it is to you because you grew up in a home where it was unsafe. No, and I'm I'll a give man. You, I'll give you. I'll give I'm you an man. example. No, I'm a dude. There's like no safe shit. Like no, no one keeps dudes safe. You got to keep yourself safe. No one. Let there's me, no one protecting let, men out here, Doctor Man. You you do let, understand let, what I'm saying? Let me. Yeah, I get where you're coming from, but let me tell you what I mean by that. All right, bet. Okay, I'll give you an example. My parents. Break it down. I have. A father who was physically and emotionally abused. I have a mom who lost a parent at a young age and and he had a mom who was loving, but not the most amazing mom, great grandmother, but not the best mom. Yes. They wanted to do better than their parents. So they read, you know, at the time the books were Dr. Spock and like all that sort of stuff. What they provided for me was consistent and loving. That I knew that if, when I was a baby, if I cried, those needs would be met with a bottle, a diaper change. That that so what that taught me is that I can have safe relationships, which mm-hmm. has allowed me to have healthy bonds with people, where I feel like I have an innate sense of who I can trust, who I can't. It's not that I think the world is a safe place that right. nobody would ever do me harm, but right. I am aware of who is safe to bond to. I have a screening process that is not even fully conscious in the beginning. Now as an adult, it's more conscious, but there are people in my life who I know I can confide in. I can be vulnerable with, I can share things with. Let me uh, call up if y'all got any questions or comments or even date and shit on on anything we've just been talking about. Can you tell me a bit about your uh, streaming or your screening process that that you now that was in you the whole time but now you recognize what you look for well look i have great instincts okay and i have great instincts because of my experiences growing up of okay. kind of validating those instincts and not validating and also look i personally got into therapy very young yeah. which allowed me to be very introspective okay as an adult one of the number one things is screening people over time. Okay. So and, that would and be... that's where a lot of people fail. That How a lot of people is... go, like, I went on three really great dates. She, she, they are amazing. Like, that's awesome. Like, I'm going to confide in them about my deepest vulnerabilities now. I'm going to tell them about yeah. really personal things. And then yeah. they're shocked when this person doesn't end up being who they thought they were. And maybe they use that against you or they hit below the belt in some fight that you have that that yeah. that is kind of part of that process. We are. Yeah, to, that's totally I, I know exactly what you're saying. There's nothing worse we, also, than... we, we innately have we have a hunger to couple up it to a large degree it, it we and i think it's very primal that we do yeah. want companionship even when it causes us conflict and we don't like people or we have trouble with our relationships that right. we innately want that kind of we want a person by our side we want to grow old with someone we want to know that if we're sick that someone will care for us what are like what are the some um... I often like speculate on attractions between men and women. Like what do, what do generally, cause you go back to the primate. Like, I yeah. think that's one of the problems that we have is that we deny that we are actually animals. And a lot of these, a lot of these <clears throat> beliefs that we can't, that we have are, are blamed on uh what is it? The, you know, a social structure or whatever the fuck it's called. Sure. But like the social structures come from a very real place long 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 ago so when did we stop be when i I think that a problem has occurred when we stopped being honest about who we are as animals and we want to and we're trying to go into the headspace and and be logical but at the end of the day there's some very primal things about us that we deny what are some of those things that are, that you see that men and women just have innately wanted? Well, I think companionship is is a big one. And I think that you can, under that umbrella, say sex, good company, someone to share a meal with. And I what, do think that no, some of that, that is primal. No, but like that, what do you, or what do you, you, you talk to many men and women, are there... Are, yeah. Do you see a pattern of what men want? Do you see a pattern of what women want? That's that was more that was more what I 
Well, that I think question. that it's also changed over time. I think that there there was this kind of um, belief for a long time: men just want sex, and women just want companionship. And I think as we've evolved, and I think that as our social norms have shifted, I think that that's changed a lot. There there are a lot of men who I see in my practice who have either grown out of that phase or who that's not what they're looking for, especially younger men in this day and age. And women who are saying, hey, I just want sex or you know, maybe they just want sex and then evolved into wanting a relationship. I, th- I think that there are, um, I think that the ideas of what people want based in gender are less rigid than they used to be. And I think people are getting more honest about what they want because they're able to, to say it. I, 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 my pushback would be uh, perhaps after thousands and thousands of years of us behaving a certain way and suddenly within the last 40 years that changing, perhaps what we're, the, our behavior right now is a social construct. I think it would, I think it would take a great amount of hubris to think that we would just bang just turn left after fucking millennia like fucking 40,000 years of a certain type of behavior and men don't just want sex i think ultimately the sex equals reproduction and companionship yeah. uh and security is still speaks to like hey there's you carry a child. You want to make sure that you're good. You want to be with yeah, somebody that you trust. Confirmation. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So I think it still goes back to to that general that evolutionary. Yeah. Yeah. That our, yeah. I mean, because we're animals and we just want to survive. So. Yeah. Yeah. Do we got yeah. Do we got anybody on the phone? Yep. All Here right. we go, Doctor Jen. You don't have to deal with my ass no more. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Eric and OKC. Eric. What's up? Hello, Dr. Jen. How are you guys? Hey. Let's see uh, here. Uh, I'm a married man. I've been married eight years. Like I said, I had a lot of childhood trauma. I found my grandmother's body when I was four. She had been murdered. She was dead for a week. I've oh been from my view by my dad's sister, my grandmother, family members at school. I was through hell, man. And I try to live a normal life. I joined the military. I retired, all that stuff. But it still seems to fuck with my marriage. The marriage, yeah. you know, eight years, whatever. She loves me. I love her. So how can I fix this? How does it fuck with your marriage? Like Just, uh, like, give me give me examples so the doc can really speak on it. Like, for instance, like, she she wants to be intimate, and I don't want to be intimate because sometimes I have nightmares, a lot of reoccurring nightmares, a lot of thoughts about it. Mm. Yeah. And I don't, I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to be intimate. And she thinks I'm pushing myself away from her. But that's not it. It's just, it just it bothers me, you know? Yeah. All right, Doc. It, it, it sounds like you probably got PTSD, post-traumatic stress Fuck disorder. Yeah. You know, those kind of nightmares are a sign that your brain hasn't been able to process the trauma and work through it. And ha- have you ever had any therapy? I just started getting therapy because I joined the military, but through my childhood, and I didn't get any help because my dad said um, I seemed all right. That's tough, you know. Yeah, but look, you're you're not all right. I mean, you're all right in that. Look, you're clearly a fucking survivor that you've been through hell and back again, and you're even in a relationship, a marriage like that says a lot about your survival skills, but you need to get some therapy so that you can work through this and, and talk through it and be able to even get a good night's sleep. I mean, one of the things that we take for granted, especially if you're someone who has had PTSD and it keeps you up at night, that part of what our brain needs in order to heal is a good night's sleep. And that without that, a difficult job is even more difficult. And look, your brain has been through like so much, like trauma actually rewires the brain. Like it, it literally rewires it. So you have different reactions. You you probably, do, do you have a heightened startle response? I'm sorry? Do you have a heightened startle response? Like if someone drops something, makes a loud noise, like do you get startled? kind of easily and in, inside yeah like if somebody makes a noise at 2 a.m i jump out of bed and walk straight to the door yo yeah. i got the same yeah. shit too man like i thought i was a yeah. bitch this whole fucking time some shit will like yeah. pop and i like i'll jerk and look over and be like golly chill out do you feel like that too sometimes bro 
<laughs> yeah, I do. I do. I do all the time. Yeah, that's, that's a sign of, of, of PTSD. You know, so, like so, my daughter, she plays dead under the covers. I can't have her do that because that's how I found my grandmother. She was wrapped up in an electric blanket that she yeah. burned for five oh, days. You know? And you probably yeah. have that image burned in your brain. Yeah, I was four years old when it happened, and I'm 38, and I remember it like it was yesterday. And, yeah, and, so, and you know, that's trauma. That you know, I trauma got a does that. It burns it in your brain, but but you need help to to get it out. Would you tell them? Would you like part of the therapy? Would it be to like let her do that, and you just have to deal with the thing, or is it, or should he avoid blankets for the rest of his life? Like you understand Look, what I'm I, saying? I, I think right now he he has to. He doesn't have the tools. Right, right, he right. Doesn't, he doesn't have what he needs internally in order to tolerate that experience. He's got to talk through it, and then then yeah, eventually then, you want to enter- place where that doesn't scare you, and you can. But that's so, way further along. This is something. Yeah, with, so you don't. Like, so you don't want to introduce. You don't want to introduce that ASAP. But that is part of the thing. Um, I got a question for you, bro. Like when you're going through these things and you're kind of distant with your wife and shit like that, do you explain to her what's going on? And w- does she know do. all everything? She, yeah, she does. She understands it. But it's like you said, it can be too much for a person sometimes, especially with kids, you know, I, you know, yeah, but she understands yeah. it. You know, she has some herself, you know, she understands it, you know, I th- yeah. you know she was molested by her dad and shit. So it was, uh. yeah. it's and, funny, and, man. You know, you're eligible because you're a veteran. Like, yeah, they got really good programs for the vets. Yeah, <laughs> I'm being a there's smart. No, ass. Look, there's no reason for you not to do it, and most people don't start doing it because they're scared. And and sometimes people think like, oh well, but I've been in the military, but I've been in the navy. Like, I'm yeah. I'm a tough ass guy. But I gotta tell you, look, taking a look at your trauma and facing that and talking about it, it's fucking scary like it's heavy shit and most people are terrified and most men are terrified and that's okay but you got to feel the fear and do it anyway because you want a better life and not just for you but for your kids for for your wife even if they knew you were trying man that gives that gives everybody some hope you know like you can get through anything with a plan uh you just gotta you gotta start that and i think even your wife will have shit even your wife will have uh It'll give her some hope because she, she knows that, all right, man, this is bad right now, but at least he's trying. We're going to keep working. It, it, I don't yeah. know how many times I've been in a bad situation, but as long as I got a plan in my head, I know I got a way out. I appreciate yeah. you calling him, man. Um, actually, uh, John, if you could put him on hold and find uh, – we, we let some of the Shaz people. He's he's a fucking veteran. We got, we got a vet uh, veteran – and, that, and you know what? I'd lo- I'd love to send him a copy of my book if if he's oh, up for sharing his address. Yeah, I'll send him. Yo, the- what what's the book? It's it's called the relationship six step guide to communication. Man, connection. see you are man. I've got a copy better. on my desk. I've got a copy on the desk. It ain't even yeah. fair. Yeah, but the- she got her face on there. I buy it just for that shit. Goddamn. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, chapter four is all about childhood trauma. And so, it also talks specifically about how trauma rewires the brain and how it impacts your romantic relationship. Boom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can really relate to a lot. I didn't, I didn't have death in my, I didn't have to, I didn't have to, he, he had the extreme version of it, but I, I know that I you know, like getting fucked up at a very young age and just constantly dealing with it. I yeah. found that too. Um, I'm sure you use experiences too on the other side or for yourself, like really working through the working, having these sessions, it feels mm-hmm. like you got your ass beat at the end. It's not like, Oh, I'm glad I got that off my chest. No, it totally. feels like you went, I had to stop going to my one guy because I couldn't drive to work afterwards. I was so fucked yeah. up after it and it was too it far. Was a good sign. Like that, yeah. that, that, that means you were doing good work. And, and I agree with you 100% that it does, especially in the beginning, it, typically at the beginning, it feels worse before it feels better. And it's hard to keep people when you're going, people sometimes lose faith yeah. that, oh, this is actually going to get me to a better place. Well, think about it. 
kicking drugs, you go through withdrawal, working out, you, it's fucking your first two couple weeks of working out. It's, yep. this is not some, this is no different. This is no different than most things. So just, if you do, go do, get some help, make sure, make sure you, you, you vibe with the person and everything and For they sure. challenge you. Who, who else we got? We got Dr. Jen, man, hollering at folks. Alicia in Delaware. Alicia. Hello. Hey, hey. Hey, Alicia. Hey. Hi, Dr. Jen. Um, I'm 34 years old, and I really would love to hear you speak to my generation as far as um, dating. My generation, obviously, technology. So I have a tendency, I don't like to go out to the bars and the clubs and, you know, all that jazz. I will date online. And mm -hmm. I have noticed a lot of women getting, and men too, but a lot of women out here getting to the point where they're just ready to spill it all, you know, on the first few dates, just to yeah. see if a, if a person is going to hang around. Um, with, or like, like how you guys had said a little while ago, um, women want companionship, men want sex. Well, that's obvious, you know, on certain, certain websites out here, but in today's dating world, you really, as young people, really have to keep it light. And, you know, the the fluff of the conversation to get the, the vibe that you feel, the vibe that you want in order to view it all, especially if you've got kids. Uh, I've, I've met somebody two years ago, and he has yet to meet my children. But we have very, very good connection on what? the phone calls. We see each other. Why do why do you still <laughs> you've been dealing with a guy for two years? One, yeah. do you I got think feelings that's for? Great. Him? I think she probably, that's no, great. she probably I fucked her way into having feelings and still doesn't feel comfortable to meet the kids. How's that well, great? No, 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 no. It's it is. I work in the healthcare field, and he is he is in military. So our schedules almost don't match for my custody arrangement with my, mm. my children to, yeah. you know, in that situation, I want more than, a, than you know, two to five hours. And so does he. He has two children prior. So he's not, you know, new to kids. That right. Our schedules don't match right at this moment. But we consistently every day, you know, build the foundation, the communication, even if you can't see each other every day. But here's, here's what I want to say. And, and Jude, you may disagree with me, but yeah. this is something I feel strongly about. Most okay. people introduce their kids way to way to new partners. No, there I is agree. no yes. reason. Yeah, there's no reason to introduce someone to your children unless you feel quite certain that this is a forever relationship. You don't need your kids exactly. to get emotionally bonded to someone and then have that ripped from them, especially when you have kids who are have dealt with a divorce, because that is a whole experience in and of yep. itself but or the loss I of a parent in the, in the case of a widow or widower. <laughs> well, no, let me, uh, yeah, I'm all the way there with you. I really agree. But I guess what I was saying is how long do we need to take to figure out if you want to lock some shit down with somebody? I feel like two years is a fucking long ass time. Like and here's what I'll say. crazy that right. typically the honeymoon period, it's which is, something. and I don't mean honeymoon, like, oh, one person's courting the other person. What no, I mean, mean by the, honeymoon the is- hormones, right? It, well, it's that, absolutely. Yeah. It's the hormones, it's the serotonin, it's the yeah. oxytocin, but it's also, we have this experience in the beginning of the honeymoon stage where it's like, we only, we see the person through rose colored glasses. We only see where we are like, oh my God, you like pizza. I like pizza too. I can't believe we found each other. We have so much in common. And it's like <laughs> our ability to actually figure out, is this a quality person who is the right match for me? Yeah. It takes, I say 18 months. Sometimes okay. the honeymoon can be shorter, it can be six months, it can be 12 months, but generally I typically see it at 18 months. That it takes that long. You, In order to know if someone is a good party, you need to have your first fight. You need to know how you work through conflict. You need to know how you deal with anger. You need to know how you deal with the difficult parts of life, finances, all that sort of stuff. Before you introduce them to your kid or kids, I don't, like, I don't you trust need nobody to know that shit. fought nobody within five months or fucking three months. You ain't getting a fight with your girl with, for like 90 days. How's that? How does that happen? 
agreeable you, ass bitch. You'd be surprised at it. Look, it happens. I like 18 months. I like at least 18 months. I hear you what you're saying, but I think that got like Yeah, yeah, I think you're it's probably <laughs> it's probably necessary now, but it's And also look, not to ridiculous. mention What's she that? probably has her kids 50% of the time. Those kids have now lost their mom 50% of the time. So she's going to want to give them her full attention during that time. She's going to like, sometimes I I, those I kind of divorce situations enable a parent to be more present than they would otherwise because I, they have, they don't I, have I understand the time. reasons. I understand the reasons. I just think what, what we're at is kind of ridiculous. That's that's all I'm saying. Ridiculous in what way? Look, I think. I'm, what's that? I was what married, divorced. Say? Two years is two years is a long time. But I was married, divorced, and had two children by the age of 26. He, on the other hand, was married, divorced, did 50 months in Iraq of deployment, dealing with PTSD and having to divorce his wife all at the same time. So yeah. depending on each person's trauma, you have to build that 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 vulnerability level up. And my generation, these how, my generation how, and younger yeah, don't your generation is bitch. That's my that's my nice way of telling they you, are. y'all bitch made. And I can't, I, I'm not allowed to criticize it because I don't, I don't date my own age. I date older. I'm 34. I date in 40s because my generation is. Yeah. So, but like that doesn't make you excluded. You like sometimes sometimes. You got to fucking keep pushing even if you're fucking scared. And look, I understand. I agree with with yeah. what the doctor's saying. That there is a bit a lot at risk, but this is a brand new thing that we've that we're dealing with right now. It's this is first off, broken homes is like the the level of broken homes and divorces and never been married. This is the craziest i've seen in like modern times now that we have like cities and shit like that so we're just yeah. adjusting to this these things and i don't necessarily know if that we're adjusting to our reality but i don't know if it's all the way natural and then what part isn't natural look man i think i think the I think the lack of people knowing what to do with gender roles is really hurting things. Nobody knows how to behave. Nobody knows what to what is accept, uh, what is to be expected. Men men want a girl, a woman that uh, you know he can take the lead for, but isn't boss enough to command the lead. And then women want a, a dude that they can that will like fucking protect them. They want to. They want a head of the house, but then they don't want to be like, and then they then they emasculate the dude and need, have to feel their needs to like have their you know have their wants met all the fucking time. Like, what do you want to be? Do you want a leader or do you want to be the leader? Because you can't. There, there is no. There's there is no equal. You know that, and I know that. It's ridiculous. And, and look, I I think that the more we know ourselves, the more we are clear on ourselves, the more we do work on ourselves, the more clarity we have about ourselves, the more clarity we have about what we want in a relationship and a partnership, and the more we're able to actually verbalize it to someone and figure out a lot quicker if yeah. if you're a match with someone. No, I hear you, but like, Doc, you're a strong ass woman, right? Yes, like, I am. You're a boss chick. <laughs> Thank you. You're not going to fucking settle for some dude that can't keep up with you. You're not. It this goes against true. it goes it's good. it goes against nature, statistics. We all know this. So so if you if you want a dude that is like fucking doing his thing that you are like you have trust in. You but also be... I had to experiment with men who couldn't keep up with me in order to find that I wanted to be with one who could. Everybody wants that, and if they don't, it, it smacks of a great insecurity that they that they that they need to have a weak man to boss around. Like, if you're healthy, you probably want that, and that's yeah. what I was saying. Like, this is that's what I meant back to like, what do but, we want from do, people? But I and do think I think when you say there are are no equals, that's not yes and no. Look, 
if 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 you look in every category, if you're like, okay, are we equals financially? Are we equals in parenting? Are we equals intellectually? Are we equals in terms of our looks? Are we equal in terms of our strength? Like, sure, if you look at every category, like any partnership, different people are going to bring different things to the table. The question really ultimately becomes, is this compatible and is this someone you will respect? Is this someone who you can communicate with and have a healthy relationship with? Is this a, is this a good match? Totally. I, yeah, I'm, I'm with that all the way. But like, you got to understand about a man is uh, very smart women get a man. And even if they're more capable of that than that man in certain areas, they allow the dude to do the dude things. They're smart enough to find somebody that is capable themselves and have trust in their decisions. That's how it's been working like, very well. Like blind trust? I'm not saying you have to be quiet and just, yes, yes, sir, no, sir, but like, yeah. yo, yeah. you nitpick a motherfucker to death. You yeah. you want you you want a leader, but then you sure. don't let the motherfucker lead. And then wonder why shit crumbles. Like you can't have it both ways. Yeah. Yeah. You can't be the lady boss and be the lead and want a leader. There's one leader. Look at teams. But I think that different people lead in in different things in a relationship. Yeah. That like, yeah. Smart ladies just fucking finesse their man into fucking shit. And you know, (laughs) yeah. Give them a blowjob when they wear that shirt. Like, it's that, it's pretty easy. You know, like, we're agreeable. We're, 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 like, we're not, there's ways to deal with shit instead of just, like, running up on him and try to outman a man. You're not going to do that. And if you do, you'll hate him. You know why? Because I fuck all the girls who've outmanned their men, and they'll be sitting at the house waiting for their girl to come around, and I got her crawling around on all fours in my apartment. I see it. This is not me making up things. This is the truth, Doc. I hear you. I hear you. So what do we do about the dating shit? Like how like how if how is a shout out to Shannon, she listening. Um how and she's a woman, an older uh, uh not older, but like a grown woman that understands. Uh so I guess what I'm so how's the dating the dating apps helps and hurt our our ability to achieve relationships which is a great question and i think they do both yeah i I think that where they help is that the level of abundance allows us to sort through a lot of people to really look for very specific things that are important to us common interests you know religion whatever is important to you politics you know physical attributes whatever it is that in that way that kind of it's you know, it's a kid at a candy counter. But on the flip side, it is, it makes people very disposable. And there are things that I think that people 20, 30 years ago might have gone on a date and be like, oh, you know what? I'll give him another chance. Yeah, you know what? She's not what I was expecting, but hey, you know what? I'm going to be open to this. And I think it's too easy to swipe left, swipe right, like get rid of people. And I also think that there is a, idea that there is such an abundance oh i don't have to put up with anything i don't have to do the hard work of a relationship i can just yeah. swipe and find someone else i, I agree with you it's really and, and look this it's on on both sides who men and women are like that uh i'm extremely picky there's and it wasn't just the date naps not so but like i've really met super fucking awesome ladies mm-hmm. i was broken at the time and i really couldn't i i I wasn't ready to look at myself as being broken, and I let a, I let a relationship with mo- like most of the women that I had not the not the feminist that would crawl for me and shit like that, but like the other ladies, they're like they was all legit settled down with material. I was just fucked up. So, yeah. and I use this idea of choice and choice and choice to help me not be intimate just like just like what you were saying yeah i've i've now i i've been i've been listening to the man the man guys which they they didn't give me any new fucking like it didn't change the way i felt about any of this because what man guys 
dudes that talk about men because we're yeah. often we're often ignored and sure and and the my experiences have i've went through all a lot of this shit on my own mm -hmm. but there's certain statistics that i was able to hear and um that women tend to be pickier than men are mm -hmm. as far as looking for a mate and yeah. and that might even get crazier when you have so many guys hopping in your deep like women probably have everybody in their in their messages i get two or three or four yeah. um so so sometimes i think sometimes women w overvalue themselves because they think they 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 want the fucking best looking dudes possible. And if there's some guy that's cool with potential, they're getting swiped, they're getting swiped past. So based on this, what what I see happening for my own thing, as soon as I arrange the date with the woman, now I am in the driver's seat. Yeah. I have control now. Because yeah. so many so do you know how many women holler at me that I would they have no business talking they're not in my league they think they are because they think they're better than what they are so when they show up i'm the one sussing them out mm -hmm. and i may hang out with them i may not or i'll be like she'll be good to fuck yeah i know and, it's hard look, there, it's weird there's, to hear, there's but... some people who believe in kind of the evolutionary psychology kind of perspective on that, that the woman's got one egg, the guy's got a lot of sperm. So she needs to be selective on who is going to kind of implant in that egg. And like that, she, then she's out for the count for nine months. So like, and with a child for a long time, kind of in terms of evolutionary, that there's yeah. some that believe that that is kind of where that comes from. You know, I think that ultimately everybody should be coming into the relationship going or the first date or whatever it is going, is this person right for me? That a lot of the time people get very caught up and especially a lot of women I see in my practice of like, does he like me? Like, it, like even if they may appear like they're thinking, oh, they're the shit and they've got it all together, but everybody's got their own insecurities and people True. come to the date with it even if they don't show it. Yeah. And ultimately, everybody should be going, is he the right person for me? Is she the right person for me? And well, figuring it out. Why? Well, and like the ultimate point was, was this. It's like, look, I know that women like the top 20, like dudes will we'll take 60% of the ladies. Uh, women, they like 20, 30 percent of the dudes. So all these women are fighting over these guys. So yeah. I know I'm not top tier. So by the time they get to me, I'm getting fucking ducks. Like I'm getting motherfucking <laughs> fucking turtles and poodles and shit like that. Just so now I got some chicks might be in my league, but if they're not, I just fuck them. I, and I keep it. I keep it a thousand percent. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm not looking for nothing serious. And I bang mm -hmm. them. And that's happening even for the women that the women that are in my league, but they're hollering at these fucking really, uh, really good looking dudes. Mm -hmm. They're not in their league. So yeah, these guys will fuck them and curb them. And they're well, all but broken also, I mean, up. I, I think there's also another perspective. And I, I, I think okay. back to like season four of my show, Couples Therapy with okay. Dr. Jen on, on VH1. You know, I was with Farrah Abraham and Farrah Abraham came to the, the show and her partner took off and she was alone. And so one of the things she and I did, we did an exercise where she went online to find a date. And then I was kind of like coaching her through the date. The first thing she did when she went on was she picked the, like, she was like, oh, what about this guy? And it was some guy who was like six pack abs, posing in the locker room, the gym, super handsome guy. But as a therapist, I looked at that and went, this is a narcissist. Yep based on all of his photos, the things that he wrote, like, yeah, but that says something to me about her and her emotional readiness to have a relationship. It's one thing if you're just looking to get laid, but if you're actually looking to have a relationship and that's who you're picking, it's important to reflect with yourself and say, right. what's going on that I am picking people who are emotionally unavailable for the kind of relationship that I want. That's about you, meaning the person who's doing the picking. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think, well, that, I, 
No, I all, I all the way agree with that. And that was kind of my point that about what do we value? Mm-hmm. What do we value? And a lot of ladies, they want a himbo because he's very handsome. And, and it, every these pictures depict a very strong man, you know? So that's what they want. And even that's clicking in the back of their head. Sure. But you're you you're right he is a narcissist and he's got every reason to be he probably knocked down four girls that week off of tinder you know he's curbing three of them right now like that's how the fuck it goes um so who created that who I who's mean, the one bombing the image and who created these yeah. women that are, are delusional the fucking dudes these simps that are all up in their dms and you're the greatest i can't believe anybody would say that to you we've created this like uh uh, like almost this vicious cycle where where it's almost impossible to, to for us to find intimacy with somebody that we really deserve. Well, but yet people do. Lots of people do. And, and I think that's worth noting. You know, in fucking that, five years, more women are going to be single without kids than ever before. And there are also lots of people who are in relationships, long-term relationships, committed relationships, marriages. It's not like nobody's ever married. It, I agree with you that it is challenging. Okay. And it is challenging, I think, also in a world where not everyone has the emotional skills that they need. You I know, hear to you, me, but that, I, that's a big issue. Yeah, but we're humans. We need to reproduce. Yeah. We have to. But, if- but you can reproduce without having any relationship you can go to a sperm bank you, can get you know a why you can go to a, you still an need a fucking man you still need a man like yeah you can but, fucking but uh, that speaks to exactly what i'm saying that people that? need emotional skills in order to have relationships and reproduce and have a family of some sort totally and have relationships and have intimacy and have connection which yeah. like you and i were talking about at the beginning that's really yeah. ultimately what most people crave. Yeah, I totally agree. I agree with everything you're saying. I just think that um, we have been we've a value system that is illogical, irrational, to the point where it's almost like delusional has been put into place, and it is hurting us as a whole. Yeah. That's so, yeah, you can go get a fucking you still a motherless. You think you think some lady, some single woman that has to go pay to get some semen pumped in there is going to be a fucking good mom. She can't even fucking deal with a man. How's she going to deal with a d- damn child? Like to me, that, I think that that's there a sign that you lost of single women who all, go to sperm banks who end up being great moms that they just didn't necessarily meet the right person who's ready for the same thing as them at the same time. So, so you're telling me that all you're more. telling me that all a man is good for is supplying sperm and no, raising a child. No, I'm not saying that at all. So there you go. There you go. They're choosing I'm not to that fucking at all. they're but choosing also, to raise a men. child without fucking without without a father. There are also men who in this day and age go and get an egg and a surrogate and become single dads. I've seen plenty of that happening in this day and age too. I what think that it's a more. easier. What, ha- what happens more? Let's well, more women. All yes. right. Yes. Yeah, so but, but I also see that more might be a reaction men. to that might be a reaction to us having to deal with these wacky ass ladies right now. Well, look, I think that they're wacky ass ladies. And I think they're wacky ass men as well. Yeah, but the problem is, is we don't have the law on our side. Women do. I have. I am a single father. I couldn't even get. I don't even have. I barely could get rights to my child. I don't even like. I've been through the fucking thing, and there, I, there's a gang of dudes sitting back there, can like nodding. The risk yeah. reward is fucking higher for men because the law is on your side. Uh, you look, know divorce are- rates. You know statistics. Like, to, and to not to not. To not acknowledge that is we're not going to we're not going to fix anything. And look, I've seen both sides of it. I, I, I get what oh you're my God, with the plenty both of those si- situations as well. Doc, you but are I've being also disingenuous. Seen some, some of the other you're, side. Yeah, you're being disingenuous because statistically the, the cases out, you, you couldn't even it's not even comparable. You can't even compare them. It's you, almost you like know, you're not holding women responsible for their actions. 
specifically what do you mean hold women well, responsible for their actions you, like look men aren't the ones that are out here filing for divorce men don't usually benefit from divorce men don't get to have their child women women file well, for like so 70 to 80 percent in california look i'm not an attorney i'm a therapist but in california right. the default is 50 50 custody just now like this is fairly recent and that's not across the country i understand i totally so, get that so yeah so like once it gets across the whole country i don't like to use one state as an example of fairness i think that's i, I, I understand when there's, when and, there's uh fucking 49 other states doc like it's just like here in michigan my my girl could cheat on me uh at, they just changed the law a couple they could uh, back in the day or like 10 years ago my girl could cheat on me get knocked up have me supporting the fucking child we get divorced she keeps half my fucking shit i get to pay for her and they got me paying child support for a kid that's not mine financially well, that, that financially that doesn't make any sense yeah. most of y'all laws don't not y'all but yeah. most well, of these I didn't laws, make the laws. About, no I, no I didn't mean it like that but most of these laws don't that's what I'm saying believe me so if like, I made the laws they'd be very different yeah but like that's what I mean like uh, I think a lot of a lot of stuff in play like there's cool ass women but they don't have to be <laughs> that's the thing. they're cool because they because they want to be and that actually makes them really cool because at any given moment they could be like boom and blow everything up and take everything and i think women that value a family children and all of that don't do these things i'm not i'm not excusing men's awful behavior except for there is a penalty for a man's awful behavior financially and i think emotionally it both behaviors really damage the, everything and we get so caught up in money that we let that direct us in our actions can we take a call please Okay, I'm gonna kill Fine. myself. Okay, all right. Um, <laughs> um, let's see. Let's go. Let's go to uh, Natasha in Kentucky. Hey, dude, and Doctor Jen. Dr. Hey, Jen, Natasha. Man. So my parents weren't necessarily bad parents. It just stems from I really only remember like bits and pieces of my childhood. Uh oh. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> my dad, I'm. I met him when I was eight, and then my mom, you know, she did the best she could do as a single mother. I just don't remember shit. <laughs> and so your dad impregnated your mom. Were they married? No, no. And, so, and then uh, he disappeared? My mom in Illinois. No, my mom stayed in my life, mm -hmm. but my mom disappeared from my dad, if that makes sense. He moved. So, okay. so, she, so she took you brother, away from dad. Was dad violent? Did he have a substance abuse problem? What made her take you away from him? She actually went to the violence once. She left the good guy for the the shithole. So what, your know. dad was a good guy and then? Yeah, my dad was a good guy. And then huh. she went back with my brother's dad. Okay. And stayed with that abuse. Like, and, but So he was a violent guy. Said, yeah, my mom so said he never touched me because huh, I wasn't his kid. Ooh, he what? Because you so weren't like, his kid? Abuse. My mom told me like he never abused me because I wasn't his his daughter, but he did yeah. abuse my brothers. And, and do you and know if your brother was abused in front of my you? My youngest brother. What'd you say? Was he abused in front of you? Uh. If she was, I probably like blacked it out. Like I honestly don't remember just the story. Ooh. And was he, do you know if he was violent with your mother? With my brother, hell yeah! Like I saw no, mother. shit. Like mother. Oh, with my with mom. Yeah. He was. Yeah. Okay. My okay. Like he's my fucking uh, uncle. Like <laughs> he married my mom's mom. I'm right. I'm sorry. He married my mom's sister. Huh. It's a whole fucking shit show. Like, Yo, Jerry yeah. Springer. Doctor, doctor, let me ask you this. Is yeah. uh, Sometimes you hear 
like kids that deal with early trauma, they can remember everything. It's kind of locked in their brain. They just remember a lot of this shit. And then there's that flip side with the blackout thing. Yeah. What does that what does I, that mean? I see the blackout more. Even the kids who remember that stuff like burned in their brain, like the caller we talked to before who has the vivid memory of being four years old and seeing his grandmother dead. Yeah. That usually it's snapshots that yeah get burned in the brain and our traumatic memories. Yeah. But typically what happens is that our brain protects us and it does not give us memories until we are ready to receive them. In order to be ready to have them, you need a support system. You need to have um, emotional tools. You need to have a situation where if you have a memory that's traumatic, you have a system in place where like if you crumble kind of like you were saying that like when you would go to therapy dude that yeah. you would be coming back to to work and you would be non-functional that like okay your brain at some point if you didn't pause therapy or switch it to a after work situation yeah. your brain would then go fuck this i'm not giving you any more memories because i can't process this and then go to work that just doesn't work for me so, so i think what's happening is that natasha's brain is protecting her okay so and, and i don't like you i'm i don't want to turn this into the 80s where everybody thinks they got molested or abused and all that shit remember that big thing that happened back in the day um i don't want to plant any seeds that she was molested or abused sounds like she was but uh is are there any behaviors that a person that has had a certain amount of trauma tends to uh, to well, specifically do? sexual trauma at a young or age? Just, I don't know. Like I don't know. Do you, I don't know. If she was man. I hate to say it. Whenever I hear about a strange man in a house with a fucking girl, I kind of yeah. lean towards fucking sexual trauma. Um, sure. And, there, and look, with with sexual trauma, a lot of the yeah. time, well, you know, obviously there is kind of huge gaps of memory where you don't remember anything. So there can be, you know, like we were talking about with the the vet, that yeah. there can be traumatic memories, difficulty sleeping, insomnia, sleeping too much, sleeping too little, severe depression, anxiety, right. eating disorders, uh, self harm, cutting, okay. especially. Um, also difficulty when it comes to when you're an adult having sexual relationships, uh, certain activities being triggering or like not being able to do certain activities that maybe you were forced to do when you were a, a young child. You know, those kinds of things tend to be giveaways in adulthood with kids. Also, regressive behavior like bedwetting at an age when you're supposed to no longer be doing that. You know, what if, they, also, what if you have someone pee on you? Does that count still or not? Nah? Golden showers is a whole different category. Okay, so I'm good. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Just checking. Um, do, do, do you have like any like extreme shit like uh, uh, on? Uh, is, she, is she still on the phone? Are you there? Yeah, I'm still here. Can do you hear me? Do you have any like wild shit? Like are you extremely like over sexual or totally rigid? Or no, you, you find I just don't like want You're... to. She's rich. And I've been married to my poor husband like for ten years. So in yeah. the beginning it was like fine, but then as like sh bad shit happened, like you know what I mean, life happened. I just yeah. fucking just don't. I don't care. And he thinks huh. it's him, but it ain't him. It truly ain't. Like he's a yeah, great but, fucking you know, man. Like I think also one wow. thing to keep in mind, Jude, is that yeah. even if there wasn't sexual trauma, like let's just say, look, it's very yeah. possible. But like, even if there wasn't, growing up in a violent household yes. is a huge trauma in and of itself. Truly. Yeah, and I'm see, glad you corrected yeah. me on that because I didn't mean yeah. it like that. I just wanted, wanted to see if there's yeah. telltale see, signs or other it, weird shit. Seeing her brother be abused is incredibly traumatic. Even if she wasn't abused, seeing her mother be abused is incredibly traumatic. And it also creates a lot of anger that has to go underground for kids because what happens is kids see this go on and they feel fucking helpless they're like why are you hurting my mother who i love so much like and why am i so helpless and a lot what of the about time survivor's kids, guilt too 
do they can yeah. you tell me about like survivor's guilt a little bit because i always hear about it yeah. would that apply and, and and that would make sense for someone like natasha because her brother sounds like was physically abused yeah. but she wasn't at least right. according to her mom. So a lot of the time there is tremendous survivor guilt because you see that something terrible happened to this other person and you go, well, why isn't this happening to me? And there's a part of you that's relieved. Thank God this isn't happening to me. This is terrible. And then you feel guilty for feeling like, thank God this isn't happening to me because it's happening to someone else that you love. So it's a total mind fuck. So this, um, so what do you suggest is her next step? Therapy. Definitely therapy. I mean, therapy is is really the most important thing that you can do to work through this kind of trauma. Do you hear that? Therapy. Are you there? Scott was a man. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. This is what I find. I got with a man who is abusive as well. Well, Of course, that's all you know, right? Yeah, I mean, that's what's familiar to you, so it, it makes sense. It's, are you still with that person? Is that your husband, or was that a relationship before your husband? It's like a relationship before my husband. Yeah, that's so your wild. husband's not abusive? He's chill. No, he's not abusive uh, at all. She <laughs> probably would have banged more if, really he, if he was. That's the shitty part. Yeah. But yet we, te- we tend to recreate our traumas and and right. there is something that we call repetition compulsion which is that when we have these traumas that don't get worked through that children especially children are egocentric and what that means that's not narcissism egocentric means they think everything is about them that is normal healthy development so if dad yells at you you go oh shit I must be really unlovable. I must be a bad kid. There must be something wrong with me because he's the adult and and the adults must know better than I know. Yo, yo, Doc, is is that why they've made books like it's not your fault that they're getting a divorce type deal? Yep, exactly, exactly. And, right. and and that is an important part of telling a child when you are getting a divorce that the parent needs to really emphasize to the child, this is not your fault. So when you have a kid who is egocentric, and, and that's normal development, who goes, right. oh, shit, there's something about me. So in, in Natasha's case, she had an abandonment from her biological father. Then she, she had wait, this well, what horrible do you mean abandonment? that her mother left yeah. the father. So regardless of whether he abandoned she, her or the mother forced it, she lost a, a father. And then now and that she's putting that on herself. Speaking. Yeah, it, that emotionally could be put on herself. speaking, that's okay. an abandonment. Then she ends up with this guy who is abusive. Yes. So what happens typically is that because kids are egocentric, they go, this must be my fault. There must be something terrible about me. I must be so unlovable right. that my dad didn't chase me down, try to find me, come and get me take right. me want to see me want to send me flowers and gifts and yeah. love me there must be something so terribly wrong with me and then she's got this other guy who is abusive so that oh, egocentric so- child goes oh shit if That's i were a, a kid this wouldn't be going on in my yeah. household so that like even cosigns like to leave one yeah. to another and then get your ass whooped she's really feeling and, fucked and up. then what happens is that our unconscious mind doesn't know the difference between past, present, and future. And it's always trying to resolve old traumas in new time. So what our unconscious mind is wired to do is Uh. let's find someone who recreates this trauma. So let's find either an emotionally unavailable guy like dad. Dad was not available, no fault of his necessarily. No, his mom's fault. The laws of uh, the laws made and the I, laws enabled the mother to abuse her child for more than ever in that scenario if we're getting all the accurate information if he was a great guy and the mom just took him away absolutely then we've got dad too who's violent <laughs> and so what happens is natasha's more likely to pick either a violent guy which she did at one point because her mm-hmm. unconscious goes if i can make this guy who's violent not be violent, it will mean that dad was wrong about me. 
then right. I'm not unlovable after all. I'm actually yes. lovable because I got this person to not be violent, so I must be lovable. So now, now she's onto the nice guy that's similar to her. Her remembering her father, this nice guy, and she's kind of like bored with him in a way, or, or or not. I don't know if bored's the right way, but she doesn't find herself sexually interested, and but that she's, doesn't necessarily she's aloof. Mean she's bored. Look, we also don't know that she didn't recreate some kind of abandonment with, like she had with Dad Number One. It's, that's what I mean. Uh, that's emotionally available. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like that 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 was my that was my thing. I, I just was trying to figure out if like her were you disinterested? Were you like sexually disinterested in the in the abuser too? Um nope. But See? Like that that's that kind of what I was saying. Like that's what I mean. Like so she 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 almost equi- uh, uh that's love to her and she's more responsive yeah. to that than her original yeah. relationship. And also, when you're with an abusive person, it doesn't require you to be okay. emotionally intimate right. because you are dancing so fast to try to impress them, get them to not abuse you and love you and care for you, that there's not intimacy. There's not emotional intimacy because huh. it's, it's, it's all a attempt to show that you are lovable. I, I'm lovable enough. If, if I can get you to stop being violent and abusive, then that means I'm lovable. Well, I hope that fixed you. But you probably don't even need therapy now. She doesn't sound um, impressed. Yeah. (laughs) Did I also? (laughs) Well, I have another question. Should I put my son? No, no, no. No, we can't. We can't. We can't. We can't. We got. We got got people online. We got one last call. All right, one last call. Good luck with that, Doctor Jen, man. Been too long. She's over here fucking so saving lives. What Natasha's question was. Oh, right. You can <laughs> hear it, but we're not going right. to answer it until the. No, don't answer. Okay. All right. What if you it? can answer in three words, you can. Go ahead. Hold on. What is it, Natasha? Can Natasha? What's my, your last question? Can you hear me? Yeah. What's your last me? question? Yes. My 15-year-old now was also. He witnessed me being abused. Should I get him therapy as well? Yes. Boom. See, three words or less. I only that was one. one. Yep. Yes, you took more sure. words to tell me it was three There's less than three more, words. For sure. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Bam. All right. Who's our last call? Dr. Jen, man, has been kind enough. She's a fucking professional, y'all. And she's taking up, <laughs> taking up time to save lives. Who we got? Ron in the Bay Area. Ron. Hey, how's it going? I have to agree with you. The uh, laws are made for the women. Ah. Uh, I, We're, we can't get into that Ron, debate. Ron, John was, I'm going to find you in the Bay Area. I'm going to punch you was, in the throat. Yo, John was like, this is going to be a it. real easy one. It's not going to be a debate. That He's all in my ear telling me that shit. I'm like, all right, sweet. Let's end on a high note. All right, Ron, <laughs> I'm going to put you back up again. Don't, don't fuck me. Hey, no. I, <laughs> all right. so, so I've hey. been single, and all I've been doing is uh, hooking up with escorts for like the last 12 to 14 years. How do I get out of that situation where I can get oh. back into a regular relationship? And I'm assuming that what you like about an escort is that you can pay them, them, and then have them leave, right? Is that the the pull for you? Uh, you know what? It's uh, I don't want to bring women around my kids, really. Okay. So That's- it sounds like he was traumatized from a divorce. I'm guessing, or from it- relationship. Do you have your kid full time, or do you have a custody situation? I'm full time, hundred percent. Mom's dead, out of the picture. Okay. That's the only way he's gonna get custody, Doc. It's got to be dead or a crackhead. Um. So let me ask you something. I always tell all parents that they should have at least three people who they truly trust to babysit. Do you have three people who you trust? Absolutely. And how old are your kids? Uh, they're they're seventeen and fifteen now. I mean, shit. Okay. Do they need okay, so now they're, they're old enough where you could date, where like they could go do a sleepover at a friend's house, or you could have someone stay with them. They're so seventeen. Now, like, they can can't they be by themselves? Or seventeen? What are you do? Well, yeah, look, the, the seventeen year old is out, and the fifteen year old is is there. I don't know how responsible his fifteen year old is. Is it so, fifteen year old a fuck up? If so, get a babysitter. If not, good. But but anyway. Now you're at the stage where you actually can date, where 
in terms of the setup of your life. So it's important for you to really look at what is holding me back. When you have been working with escorts for 14 years, it can be hard oh. to tolerate the emotional and sexual intimacy in the same place. And you already lost someone who was probably very near and dear to you, your children's mother. So you've experienced a loss. So the other thing is that I would want to make sure that you have grieved that loss, that you have actually done the work to allow you to be emotionally available to your next potential partner. Well, the, the, the ex-wife, you know, died during the divorce. And, you know, it was more of a blessing than a disguise because it would have been horrible for my kids to grow up with yeah. a woman who was so damaged. Uh, <laughs> was, she, was she a drug addict? So she went through all the sexual trauma and things that you guys were talking about with the previous caller and never yeah. dealt with. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not, she sounds like she was a tortured person. So, so is, is he addicted to, would, would, do you feel like you're addicted to prostitutes and how has that affected the way you look at women uh i look at all women you know the same way just with prostitutes it's not like you're trying to wine and dine them at the bar and then they run off with some other dude yeah you know that what's going to happen at the end of the date you know what i'm saying there's a bit well, more honesty. Look, it's time efficient but what i'm hearing in that accounting is that you're afraid of someone leaving you God. and abandoning you and cheating on you and it sounds like you've been hurt in that way before. I'm afraid of someone trying to take advantage of a of a good person trying to be a you know, you know that it's 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 a hard situation where you've been traumatized by a woman when you were trying to do the right thing and thought that it was a loving relationship. Of course, of course. And look, I think that what you really want to do in getting back into the dating world is, like I said before, screen over time, move slowly. Look, you can continue to work with the prostitutes if you want to get your sexual needs met there. Will you screen someone over time before you jump into bed with them, before you commit to them, before you start doing all this other stuff? Screen, take a lot of time. Yeah, you're gonna have to find, look, here's the deal, man. You gotta have faith. You have to have faith that, that, you find that you can find the right woman because what do you want to continue getting prostitutes after everything I've said you, and I'm not saying just believe in every chick look for the red flags but you have to you you have to be willing to get hurt it's true like, that's just it, man. You're going to have to deal with it. And it was something I had to come to, and it took a very long time, and I know it's hard because I, 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 know, I know what it feels like to get beat up constantly in these, in these things, and it does fuck you up, man. So you got you to be, you, yeah, you gotta be courageous. It's painful to put your heart out there, to put it on the line, and have it stomped on. Do not be stupid with these chicks, but... Look and be like, is this me freaking? Write down what you want and then look and be like, is this me freaking out? Am I overreacting or is this person really fucked up? Like you have to, you got to constantly check in with yourself, I would say, because fuck, I, that, that's what I would do. I, I'd be like, be complaining about it and they're like, no, that's just me finding a way to not be close to this woman. Yep. I think that's well said. Good luck. And, uh, don't let don't don't let those prostitutes serve you any open drinks or no shit like that. Cause they'll take your watch too, bro. Please believe totally. it. Good luck to you. Doc, that was a really fun time. I really enjoyed that. Me too. We yeah. we went on quite the roller coaster together and we covered a lot of ground. And and like look, you even at the end of the day, like I hope you understand that. We all got to be brave and we all have to be accepting. And ultimately, it's for everyone's own good that we yeah. connect with one another. I agree with you completely. Doc, it's been too long. I hope to have you again. Let's plug Very the well. book one more time. Dr. Yeah. Jen, man. The relationship the fix. Yeah. Relationship, the relationship fix. fix. 
Dr. Jen's six step guide to improving communication, connection, and intimacy. News coming up next. Let's go. Thank you, Doc. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're listening to the All Out Show with you. And now, it's time for News from the Chin with John Z. Matthews. Seems like it is important to communicate about sex during sex. That is something one should be doing. Like how... I didn't... When I picked that headline, John, I wasn't really sure how much communication we're talking here. Well, they're pretty much saying uh, verbally and or non-verbally during sex if something is not working for you. I'm going to... It's funny you said... uh, I tried an experiment and I I just was like, you can't say shit. I just got to figure shit out. It's fuck. You don't even realize how many cues you're taking. You know what I mean? Sure. Come on, come on, more and more. Like just little <laughs> bits like that. Just all right. I'm on the right. I'm on the right track here. Like with no communicate. I was just. I was down there freestyling. I didn't know what the fuck. I, like I figured it out, but it, you don't realize how many verbal cues uh, one takes. And ladies or gentlemen, if you're having a problem getting to that spot uh verbal cues do help not well they are saying here's a good one ouch <laughs> ouch the pain that's my butthole how many times did that happen uh, fuck me dude right, sure. <laughs> and then they think that you're really trying to like finesse it in their ass all fucking rough like no nah, dude like it's, it's dark down there i don't know it's nighttime do they say that too much? I do. I fucking hate too much, though, man. More, more, more. Okay, right there. Oh, right there. Now stay, stay, stay. Right there, right there. Like, who the fuck? What the fuck am I? Like, yo, dog. I'm not a puppet, man. Just give me some, give me some basic guidelines here. Well, they are, you know, saying one option is to just spell it out. Yes, that feels good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, and this is what, like, here, man. I'm there with. If you about to come and you want to bus and what they're doing, just say, yeah, keep doing that. I'm a bus. Or, yeah, that's going to make me come. That should give the person an idea that, like, that will get you there. Now, if you're not trying to nut all the way, why don't you let a motherfucker figure out some other, some shit? Both, both parties. Because I've gotten head, and it f- feels very good. Am I going to come off of that technique? Nah, but, like... Still doesn't mean I don't enjoy it. But if I'm about to go, I'm like, yeah, just stay there, stay there. Keep keep it like that. That's perfect. Yeah, I think there was some lady trying to slip a finger in my ass once, and I just kind of like, eh, you know, I'm good on that. Thanks, though. I mean, yeah, certain things you should be very direct about. Like, hey, don't sodomize me with your <laughs> finger. <laughs> not into that. It's not a big turn on for me. <laughs> and look at your fingernails, for fuck's sake. Jesus Christ. Cool it on the butt stuff. Yeah. But then also Ixnay on the ass play, <laughs> as they say. But then they also talk about uh, some negative feedback. Um, this isn't doing it for me. This was doing it for me, but now not so much. Can't imagine hearing that. But yeah, I, I tell that story over and over again. But it happened once, and I was like, "Ew, we could have figured that out two years ago." But all right, fine. Here we go. Now we know. Does this ever hurt your feelings as someone who's tied up in sex and performance? That it's not doing something for you? Well, no, no, I'm saying, does this ever, like, if, if some lady says, oh, no, 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 stop that, or, like, does this feel like it's hurting your game, or you just don't no. care? No. Okay. No, 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 no. Yeah. I don't, like, I think that's, like, don't take shit personal, man. Everybody likes different things, and from different people, and or maybe... Even, come on, bro, think about it like a meal or something like that, or a day. You know, fucking ice cream sundae sounds awesome later on the day. You start that shit off at breakfast, that's not the best deal. You know, it's, sometimes it's just the order of things as well. It's not, you know, that technique might work if you push it down a couple, ten minutes later, you know. 
Well, and then there's also this uh, advice here. When you're talking about using words, uh, it's best not to use go left or go right. Because depending on your position, your left is your partner's right. So just say, go towards yeah, my inner yeah, that's That's uh, fucking annoying. That kind of direction. That's what I'm talking about. Like, you know, go left. No, further, further left. No, that's too far. Hot, 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 cold. Like, who, who? Nah, man. I get it. If the dude's eating the pussy and he can't find the clit, like, help him out. But, uh, fellas, if you can't find a clip by now, Jesus, what's going on with you, man? What's happening? Mm. I'm guessing that this is, I, I keep looking at it from a male's point of view with a woman communicating with me. I think I relate to it like that because it seems like it's harder for women women to come. Sure seems like it. Here's the thing, though. Like, I feel like the shit that bothers me is some fucking OCD alpha woman that will not give up control. And that's exactly who needs to give. Like, just stop, dude. Let go. Let go. Sometimes I can get a chick to just stop with all that shit. And other times it's just like, you're not like, I don't even it's not even worth the fucking headache, man. I hope you find someone that'll let, that'll let you uh, keep your guard down. So sometimes that overcorrection and over this, over that, tells me a lot about that person. Uh, what I, I guess what I was going to say is even if you're willing to communicate with somebody, it kind of means that you're relaxed with them, open with them, and you could you probably have an easier time reaching an orgasm. Mm -hmm. So it's that double thing. It's like, yes, you'll they'll be able to get to that spot that you need them to be and you're comfortable enough to tell them so right and it closes out here in the final paragraph they're not criticizing you they're just in the pursuit of pleasure we all are right aren't we all mm -hmm. aren't we fucking all just <laughs> <laughs> have you been I'm trying to think if I've been criticized in bed how dare you sir <laughs> You call that eating pussy, you fucking cottonmouth bitch? Well, I think it was I, last week I told you there was that one lady when I was uh, coming a little too quickly for her. You know, we're still kind of like together. And she's like, ah, you got to work on that, John. Like, yep. Okay. <laughs> that ain't criticism. No. Like, that's not like, you know, she's not just attacking your whole being and shit. <laughs> she, it's not like she's that. like, you got the worst shaped dick ever. There's nothing. Absolutely. It doesn't even matter. Fucking come as soon as you can, because we can get this whole farce over with. All right, what else? So this is not a shock, but a new study has found that eating dinner as a family makes 91% of families less stressed. So, I know it sounds ridiculous, but to be honest, I'm not... I'm not, I'm not saying it's ridiculous. I'm laughing because... Uh, we, just, we always used to eat dinner as a family. Always. Yeah. Uh, turns out... That's why, like, I go in on this shit so tough because I grew up. Cats, y'all got to understand. My mom, dad, hippies, fucking, you know, but my grandparents was, like, was in the in the war and depression and shit. So they had a whole different way that they was built. They was just built differently. And you got, you know, my mom's a feminist. I'm born after that. And basically, my whole life was just Fucking me myself too, just shitting on families. <laughs> fucking just shitting on them. Like fuck that lame shit, these corn balls. And it's uh it's it's funny to see like forty some years later uh everybody being like, Hey, turns out having a mom and a dad and a schedule and uh some semblance of order, uh, you know, shit we do every day, routines it's good for your brain. Who knew? Who fucking knew? I mean, I've been so, flying solo so long. Do people yeah. not eat dinner together anymore? I don't, I don't even know. Is that a... Th do people... Are they on their computers all the time now? Or I think it's everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's... You know... There's not as many families as there was back when we was little. And then... Uh, 
of those families are they eating together hopefully they are like my cousin they, they all have they all have dinner together nice yeah i think it's fucking good <laughs> like that's the whole point of a fucking family man ah it, and it's so odd man the shit that like just kind of feels good is good for you even even the days you don't feel like that shit yeah there was a lady in town over the weekend uh from the boxing world and uh you know, I, I can hang out with her normally. I mean, she wanted to have a vegan meal, so I had to endure that. But otherwise, yeah. just hanging out with her, having a meal, it's nice. Yeah. It's Plus, cool, bro. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I know. I'm I'm same as you. I'm single. I'm single, man. So I'm sitting there like fucking I'm watching chess videos lately and just <laughs> eating dinner watching chess videos. Like, it's fucking, that's bleak. So get out there, value your family. Try to have one. It's great. Appreciate your and uh, kids. Ain't no kids listening. What I'm talking about, but you know, parents make that a priority. Make it a priority. All right. So there are some fast shoes coming. They're still in development, but they could be available next year. And okay. they are unfortunately called Moonwalkers. And the Moonwalkers. I cannot believe that that wasn't trademarked. That's shocking, isn't it? Right? <laughs> At this I, point. You think that Michael Jackson's people would have got that off the fucking, took that off the board a long time ago. Like, hey, it ain't going to be no moonwalker.com, none of that shit. Even Armstrong and all them. All right. Well, moonwalkers. The moonwalkers. They are kind of like roller skates, but not exactly. But you can strap them to any existing shoe, and then they can increase your walking speed. By 250%. So check your text. You'll see these. Man, I used to, when you, t when I read that shit, you know, they got, Nike makes some uh, shoe that just helps shatter records, man, like for uh, marathons. Oh, right. I've seen some videos like I that. I thought it was going to be something like that. I didn't know it was going to be like some, those uh, old school Shit, I'm gonna show my age. Them like the roller skates that the metal joints that you would just yes. attach to your fucking tennis shoes. Yes, yes, yes. That basically was just made you walk taller. They didn't even roll. <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, let me see. All right, here we go. All right, Gizmodo. Since so scroll down, you'll see a little gif there. Right, let's see. You got your man cruising. Stop it, yo, bro. <laughs> They look... I couldn't do this. Are they glowing? Eh, they got a little reflector on them, I think. Bro. No. Kind of cool. I don't know. Man, they look like... Uh, you, what are those? Uh, the Teva hiking? The Teva hiking sandals? Well, that's... Keep in mind, those are his personal, uh, you know, kicks. And then he just strapped on the moonwalkers. No, the moonwalkers look like if the Teva hiking sandal... Fuck that shit. Oh, I see what you're the saying. The boot, the ankle boot thing you gotta wear if you bust the... Like, if you have a bad lower break. The giant black things that you put your whole foot through. You know what I'm yes. talking about? Yes. Yeah, that's what they... It looks like the two of them just fucking smashed. I am not gonna be wearing that shit. No, and these are not priced for for big selling here. Looks like um, if you get involved with their Kickstarter, you'll get a deal. But otherwise, they'll be about one thousand four hundred dollars. One thousand four hundred dollars, guys. Hey man, God, look, technology. That's how. That's how it is. In fifteen years, there'll be dirt. You'll be able to get them at fucking Walmart. And in 13 years, I'll be the only store left is Walmart. Get your moonwalkers. Today, sign up for the Go... Is it a GoFundMe or is it just a... Uh... Oh, it's a Kickstarter. Okay. So. I can't never tell. All right, so the Kickstarter. But then, you know, if you... If, I'm not going to make you scroll down further, but you see him zipping in and out of, uh, let's say, a busy street. So oh, like, oh, bro, I got to see. Coming through. I got to see his look man, at Come on, bro. I got to see the movement. I mean, you're going to have to look at the video to see that. I know. Is that the one that's... Okay. I, okay. Yeah. Is that the one where it looks like... <laughs> yo, he is... Get, yo, bro. He's I got to tell you. <laughs> Come on. Yo, I'm... Look. When you told me about that shit, I was super... I was super into it because I fucking, 
I get so bored walking around here in in Michigan because it's just it's not fun like LA where there's a bunch of people to look at, even bums and shit. This is so that is I ain't got a front. Them bitches look sweet as hell, man. God. You know, <laughs> nah, bro. I, you think I'm bullshit? You know what he looks like? It looks like Grand Theft Auto or some shit. The way my man moved through all the people. He is clipping along there. Yeah, man. I ain't in the front, man. <laughs> you selling me on these bitches? Oh, if you. Oh, I'd love to see. It's you, really man. smart. It's <laughs> the fucking shoes look awful. But here's the deal, man. No one's gonna have time to even look at no. them bitches. You just scooting right around all these motherfuckers. Oh, he's moving. Where, where, where'd he go? Boom. What's up with those funny? What happened to that man? <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> hey man, it's on the table. I'll send him an email. Give me, give me a few years. I might grab me a pair of them bitches. All right. So, if you pick your nose. And I've cut back on that pretty dramatically, but it could raise... Uh, it used to be a problem in the studio, y'all. Uh, let me guess this shit. He wouldn't even notice. I just look over. I stopped saying shit, too. I was just like, fuck it. It's not going to change. But uh, this could raise the risk of dementia. Look Why? out. Because uh, it looks like, you know, you can actually insert bacteria, bacteria that then uh. finds its way to your brain. So, and then picking your and nose. What does it do? Just kind of like chill up there, or does it just eat little pit, pieces of your brain apart until you, when you get old, you just snap? Is that what it happens? Yes. They, apparently, okay. they found plaques linked to the disease. So, I guess hey. there is some sort of bacteria that gets in there, and then the body creates this problem in your brain. So, got to keep your finger out of your I nose, mean, man. All right. So, peep game. So, the, so, I'm guessing ketamine and cocaine. And any anything you're any drug you're snorting would add to that as well. I would think. Yeah, because it's like unless you get some fucking straight out the vial shit, it's probably I'm talking about ketamine. It's probably been fucked with a little bit, or at least touched. And then coke. Jesus Christ, who knows what the fuck? Now it's got all the fentanyl in there now. Oh there's very few upsides here, it seems like. So what, picking your nose and doing coke? Yeah. That's kind of a one-two punch. It's true, man. It's true. But they are saying here, uh, this is the fastest way for an invader, this uh, bacteria, from outside the body to get into the central nervous system. Hey. Through that nose. So look out. Be careful. Mm-hmm. Picking your nose might kill you. So, all right. So, okay. When I used to keep coke at the house, I'd always just fucking roll my eyes when people would be like, do you got something that's not a dollar? I was just like, fucking, like, you're doing... I don't even know who's what the fuck is happening to this coke. It's <laughs> pretty goddamn clean compared to the other shit out there. But I still, like, does the dollar even matter? And I guess it does. Because there's a ton of dirt and germs oh, on those dollars. There you go. Okay. I didn't make that connection initially. But I, sorry. Sometimes I start with the thing and loop <laughs> back, which is very frustrating for some people. Uh, but that's just how my brain works. Uh, yeah, man. All right. There you go. All right. I used to get really fucking annoyed by that. Like, you don't have a straw? Like... Yo, if you're going to do someone's coke for free, bring your own straw if you don't like that shit. So, but what do I know? Etiquette. I bet you the etiquette lady would say that's a bad, that's poor etiquette. I would think so. That's our next one, bro. This is what we got to do with the etiquette lady, bro. Does she know a lot of drug etiquette? She didn't seem like that lady. <laughs> yeah, but she, we could apply similar etiquette. We could, like, we could see if, um, what she would think would be a bad etiquette and see if it just translates over to drugs. If, if, uh, you understand? Okay. That'd be very interesting. Well, you'll Bam. Be, you'll look be, at that. Fucking coming up with ideas on the fly. Yeah, all right. You'll be our Sorry expert there. No, it's all right. Now, filtered social media posts and photos and stuff like that can impact body image. This is being studied all over the place because, of course, it's happening to the kids. Kids are going online and seeing all these perfect bodies and so on and saying, well, I don't look like that. Life is bad. 
So yeah, I mean, look, it's just the way it is. This has been going on forever. It's just, it's really, we've never seen anything like this. We've never seen technology come so quickly and affect a person's, you know, their whole idea of what the world is. Even back in the day, uh, I remember, you know, being a teenager or something and looking down, being at like the 7-Eleven or someplace and they sell the magazines. They had these things called magazines back in the day. And they used to sell magazines and put the ones with the chicks in the front right below the register. Yes. And I, it, it used to hit me. I'd be like, God damn, like little girls have to look at this shit. Not the, uh, not to be sexualized. I I think the bigger thing was for them to be uh, thinking they'd have to live up to uh, an impossible standard because they're all fucking airbrushed and adjusted. So imagine that times a billion now. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, obviously they're generating this this contrast or difference between themselves and these thin people they see. Like, oh, I'm not that. I suck. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, this is, we were talking about all that slang shit, but it's really funny. Like so much, you got to picture yourself being old like us. John's old as fuck too, but yeah. like computer shit was nerdy back in the day, right? It was just like, he was a nerd if he was on that computer shit. I'm, or like, act, you know, or fucking paid as fuck and you're, dad had a fucking computer or something like that but it was just some dork shit now everybody's using computer slang you know gg brb right 1v1 lol like, yeah it's everything that the, all of the new slang is fucking you know and acronyms and you know it's all attack all your their whole the, they're communicating in the real world using computer shortening slang and stuff like that. That shows you how much uh, technology has affected them to the point where, you know, instead of taking real world slang and pushing it through the computer, they're using computer abbreviations and saying it in the real world. Like the 1v1. One-on-one's way easier to say. <laughs> You're using one on one, like you're, you're, you don't have to do any new shapes with your mouth. The one v one is actually harder to say, but they say it because it comes from the computer. It's wild. So yeah, they're totally immersed in this, and of course, it's gonna fuck them up. Parents, if you can keep your kids away from these things, actually, if like the whole family stays away from. A lot of that shit, I think y'all would be much happier. Oh, sure. I mean, I don't sit there and edit my photos, but if I'm out there knowing I'm going to post on Instagram or something, you know, I'll take I'll take several. I'm like, okay, that's the best one. I don't, I don't look like a, an ancient dying person in this one. I'll post that one. I know. And you know what, too? It's like, uh, yeah. I used to fucking just, when I was do it, I understand that process, too, you know? Like, I'll retake it if it's poorly lit or something or my eyes one eye is shut but you know and i know man if they if, if anybody sees just the fucking one thing that they feel looks weird on you bro you're gonna have to hear about it and uh so then you start just succumbing to now you're taking 20 fucking selfies to put some shit up <laughs> And they're still going to come I hate, up I hate myself for shit it. on you. Yeah. I mean. Oh, by the way, I finally saw that lazy eye thing you're talking about. I had a couple cocktails in me, and then I had a photo taken at a club. And I said, there's the lazy. It's not a lazy eye. Just like my left eye just kind of moves off. Like, Yeah, it just goes. Like, your <laughs> shit goes fucking that. maverick, dog. <laughs> your eye's like, fuck this. I'm going. <laughs> I, I get the same thing, too. That's how I know uh, I, I'm really fucked up. It used to happen a ton on ketamine. And if I like, if I drank way too much, that bitch, my left eye would just go rogue. Yeah. That bitch would be out staring at all Mad Eye Mooney. I didn't believe you until I saw it. But there it is. 
Man, do you think I just say shit just to fucking? <laughs> I thought be you were cool exaggerating. I thought you nah, were exaggerating. <laughs> I, that's why I'm like, yo, man, I can tell when you're faded because that eye just bloop, 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 bloop. It's just fucking hitting up. It's like you're having a conversation with one person, but you're seeing if someone else is cooler in the room to go talk to. Sure enough, you were right. Mm-hmm. I do have some good news, though. Let's hear it. And now, time for good news. I have a mother out of Arizona, and she has created Club Zeus. So this is to help out her... Her son, he's four years old, uh, but he has autism, so he's a little, a little different. And right. so she once a month uh, gathers up uh, her son and a bunch of other kids, and they put this like a nightclub. So they dress up and hang out and listen to music, and because you know life's a little different for these these characters, and yeah, she wants them to have like a normal experience out in the world. John, I hate to do this to you, but when you tell me that, I was I was watching that guy with those super fast walking shoes See? walk off. <laughs> See, he's special too. Bro, you know, I mean, I was really <laughs> plotting, so I don't even know what, all I heard was the mom does some shit with a child. What, what's going on? Uh, Sorry, man, I uh, put the phone down. I'm not going to look at that guy just fucking cruising through traffic, well, walking be- like a G. Well, so the mother here, she's got a son who uh, has autism, and so okay. and so she can't. He can't. I mean, first of all, he's only four, but you know, some parents are squirrely about the kid, which is unfortunate. So she's trying to introduce him into social settings. So she's got this this sort of club where they can come and hang out. Okay, you know, that's cool. Yeah. Wait, what do you mean, parents are? Squ- Par- oh, par- well, parents, I- other people's parents. Which are- sucks, man. I've got her talking about that if you want to hear that for a second. Uh, yeah, but I'm gonna, I got, you, already, you already know I got my opinion on this shit. Go ahead, let's hear what she has to say. It's kind of a bummer. Hang on. Sometimes right. we get really great responses where families are just saying, oh, you know what, that makes total sense. Let's, you know, let them continue to play. And then other times, Let them know, continue to play where I don't even understand. What, what does that mean? Well, she's saying that. There's families that run up on her and be like, you can't play here. Well, they're like, oh, wow. Only normies. Exactly. That's Only the normal kids can play here. Jude's a little too funny. I don't think we can play with Jude anymore. Yeah. That's oh, nice. wait, wait. So the kid will start playing. He keeps, he's I, probably a little excitable or something. I, well, look, man. You know, that's just one side, but I, I'll say the... I already, All right, go ahead. It's just fucking... Everybody has such a fucking myopic point of view. They can only f- see things from their point of view. All right, let's hear the mom. And then other times, you know, families will remove their child, and then he's kind of left alone to to deal with it. Being his advocate is what? one of the great. Being alone. I guess. I mean, that's that's the gist I'm getting from this lady. I don't like. I don't even know. Is a kid behaving wild or like? I don't know. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're pretty probably. All right, so you know some, some you know some people don't want their kid to get hit in the head with a truck, so they fucking or I don't know what it is, but okay, keep going. It's well, do you I, understand what I'm saying? Of this course, picture I do. that they're trying to paint, right? And then this is the other problem. It's like you can't do shit right on the other side. If you play with the kid regular, you're being too fucking tough with the kid, and then uh, you know now you're abusing this uh, little fucking marginalized little fella over here and if not like if you, and then if you hey, kid handle them you know maybe you're patronizing like w- they've created so many situations where there is no right answer no matter what you do there's always something that uh, the other parent can say unless you do exactly what they tell you to do and I wouldn't I psh- I'm not gonna. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put my kid around that either. Maybe she's super cool, but unfortunately, so many parents ahead of her has set this shit up. I know that because they did the same shit. With, they put they put cat, cats that were touched in gym pop and not tell anybody. And then like if some weird shit happened with them, where they just were getting treated like a fucking human. Suddenly, uh, you know, a person was in trouble for picking on a handicapped kid or something. It's, it's like, yo, what, what do you want? You didn't tell us. 
we treated them normal and uh, you want them to be treated normal we treated them normal but normal is not exactly the nicest way to treat somebody and then here we are principals are talking to teachers and stuff that was going on before it just got all fucking crazy and extra sensitive like I can't even imagine now like God bless this kid man and I hope he's able to find some fun things to play with but it's not all coming from like we don't like that kind of person yeah it's complicated right yeah well it didn't sound very complicated to her but if you're in Arizona you want to take your um special child to a, a nightclub of sorts Club Zeus check it out wait they're taking four year olds to nightclubs well that's I, I, I think she just created it for a four year old son but the for for everybody that's, else see that's what I, the, get a bunch of them cats together and have them play together and like that's can't nobody say shit man you just hey look man no parent has the uh, you know the moral high ground to preach to another Another prayer. All right. They, they'll they find one. Well, he's younger. He's autistic, too. <laughs> His dad's not in the house. I think this one's a girl and a boy. They'll find a way to fucking, you know, tell the other parent what to do, regardless. But if this is all from a good place, I hope that it works. Sorry, I've become a little jaded watching the behavior of people over these last 10, 15 years. You just do this. Why do you do this to me? <laughs> Here's good news. It's going to piss Judah off. Here's a parent making a fucking sweeping generalization about everybody and the way her tr child is treated. She didn't mention anything about her child's behavior, but you know. <laughs> Kill me like this, man. I just got back from being sick. Just trying to help. Man, keep triggering me, dog. Mm. Trigger! All right. Well, guess what? That's the good news. You're listening to the All Out Show with you. You, you. All right, everybody. That was the show. I want to thank Dr. Jen, man, calling up or zooming in, us chopping it up and all of that shit. We also have... At Kyle O'Kane, our producer. Also, at John Z. Matthews, our producer. And Young Daisy. Danny out here holding it down as our faithful intern who is on his last, on his little last stretch. And Destroy, who is, uh, who's, who's been a, our, the new midday dude for quite some time. Great to finally chopping up with him. It's awesome. All right, let's get it.